All right, guys, welcome to Action Living, and I'm your host, Sunbrew Brandon. Also in the house today, I got my man, Jimmy. How you doing, Jimmy? Doing good, man. How about you? Uh, it's Friday. It's nice weather outside. It got is nice weather, finally. It's, beautiful uh, weather. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I want to go out definitely later on the day, so. What would you pay, or, or what would you give up in your salary, like percentage-wise, to have the weather be like that every day of the year outside? Let's just say... 300 days out of the year be just like it is outside right now. Do I give up pay and that means I get to go out into the weather more often? It means you take a pay cut because you're going to go move to, uh, I don't know, Brandon Shawville, USA. And at this place, unfortunately, what you make a living now just pays a little bit less. Uh -huh. how, what's, how much of a pay cut are you want to take to um, uh, live in that kind of environment all the time? Shawville. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have to live in Shawville and take a pay cut? That's where the weather is. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I would, I would give up a little bit, but not too much. I'm not going too crazy. I would probably, I'd say I'd give up uh, 20% maybe. Yeah. 20%. Still have enough to live on, live good, and um, enjoy nice weather every, I mean, almost every day of the year. So yeah. basically that would mean uh, one day out of the week would not be good. The all the other six year whoa, round. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's this one day about? I said you give up like 60 days out of the year might be bad. The other 300 are good. The weather's like this every day for 300 days out of the year. Yeah, I'm not happy about that, though. Not not for really? any pay cuts. No, I, I expect that Shawville is going to have its own perfect weather system. <laughs> well, for one day of the week, though? No, that's I not, mean, look, uh, unacceptable. You get screwed in December. No, you're taking 20% of my money as taxes in Shawville. You better be able to get the weather correct. Yeah, like, but think about it. Less wrecks on the roadways because there's no rain hardly. There's no snow hardly. 65 days still. Wrecks 60, all over the 60, place. 60 days. Well, if there's okay, 300, okay, 65. 300, all right, yeah. I'll take a couple days off. But um, 65 days out of the year are a possible bad. Meaning it could be raining, light rain, could be a little drizzle, light drizzle. It could be really hot. I'm talking degrees. to the guy who's starting his own town and getting this thing right. It sounds like you went into this thing early. You uh, you, you did it better, you know, than natural, uh, you know, right. habitats. But you did it a little bit too early, and you know, the the science wasn't perfect. So now there's still 65 days of you know bad weather. What if I worded it differently? What if I worded it? How much would you pay to have great weather like 90% of the time? And I'm not taking a pay cut this way. I'm going to let you pay for a better service. Wait, wait, wait. So am I not taking a pay cut? And but I'm you're, getting but, but you're going to pay for the service, though. <laughs> See, it's, it's worded differently. It's not uh -huh. half full. It's half, it's half, uh, half full and half full. I'm onto this. Uh, this sounds like a pyramid scheme to get everybody to Scarville. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right, well, uh, listen, I'm sorry you won't be joining us. <laughs> <laughs> we have timeshares available. I have too. Maybe I can visit sometime. Probably not. Oh, okay. <laughs> either, <laughs> you're either with us or you're, or you're not. Pretty simple, cut and dry. But, like, it, you know, usually if like, you have, like, timeshares, you, uh, you know, bring them in for, like, the big, uh, you know, the hoopla. Like, hey, check it out, 90% of the time, better weather here. Uh, you know, you can get a timeshare now while you're here. You're yeah. supposed to do that, you know? So I need to be the guy who comes into Shawville, and uh, I'm like, um, I don't know. I'm hesitant. Not sure if I want the times chair. <laughs> and then, like, hot girls walking me around, and she's like, oh, Shawville's the greatest place. And then the other 65 days, everyone's, you know, doing crazy things and, you know, behind locked doors. So you know what's crazy? That's how you could sell me. So the 65 days that it is bad weather, everyone's inside, uh, you know. Let me tell you how I'm really going to say With you. each other. When you show up to Shawville for your, uh, and you have to go to that 90-minute presentation, regardless for the free trip, for the uh -huh. free weekend, uh, I'm not going to sell you myself. I'm like sauna sell you. <laughs> See, that's that's the way that you actually get these things uh, going out the door, you know? Nobody's going to be like, no, not interested. <laughs> yeah. And you're not going to say you're too poor or too cheap to a hot chick. You're not going to do that. Your man pride will stick up in there and go, okay. Yep. Yeah, I have Oksana who's always there. She's there 365 days out of the year bathing by the pool because it's nice weather. She's always in a bikini. Which happens to be right near the exit. So that, like, uh, if anybody's about to leave. They stop. <laughs> we'll put a blonde, a brunette, uh, a Hispanic chick with a nice booty, a J-Lo type. Uh, we'll put a, uh, um, a black chick that's super, uh, super hot. And we'll have a... Uh, you know, in all fairness to the Choctaw Nation, which I'm representing, I'll get me a Choctaw woman out there. Okay. Yeah, just kind of round it off, make it PC. <laughs> hot, hot Asian, hot Asian. Yeah. Yeah, how about that? That yeah, that's Ain't probably... nobody leaving Shawville. No. <laughs> <laughs> yep, nobody leaving. Everybody's staying in, staying put. So, uh, so there you go, man. Welcome to Shawville. 
Very nice. Population, you and me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of hot So ladies. I've been invited. You're, you're invited. Right on. But when you get there, you're going to have her trying to pitch you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, how about that, dude? Bikini cool. Bikini weather all the time. We better get in shape, though, with that kind of good weather. We're going to wear a lot, a lot of shorts. 90% of the time, from what I hear yeah, in the brochure. Well, you, you, listen, what you don't get, <laughs> what you don't realize is we want it to be bad. You want to stay in and snuggle a little bit. Right. If you have a great weather, she's always going to want to be at the lake, by the pool. Every once in a while, you need the time to have to go back to the house and chill by the fire a little bit, intimate. Now, if I if I am a uh, a member of Shawville, which I've just heard that I am a uh, the second member of this uh, of this great town. Well, you got a temporary pass. Oh. <laughs> when uh like if things are going my way and I like throw a bit of a fit, like oh I'm leaving this town, like do they still come back and be like no you shouldn't leave? Is that the way it works in Shawville? <laughs> Hold on, you say I'm leaving this town. Yeah. And you say, no, everything's great. Well, say again? Are all the girls still waiting by the exit after I've already paid my uh, price of admission? To oh, KPN? once you pay, it's, you're on your own. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're not really worried about, like, subscription services or anything. This is a one-time uh, fee. It's you're in. <laughs> we, 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 you've signed the dotted line. After, we'll give you three days of good service because we have a cancellation policy. You have three days to cancel. It's oh, so off. you're going to make it nice for three days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's not, you're not paying for the girls. That's prostitution. We don't do that. We're, oh. we're paying for great weather. I got a completely wrong idea of what's going on. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry that your sick mind went that way. <laughs> you know, our sales reps are not prostitutes. They're there to help get you signed up. Someone's <laughs> got to do the paperwork. But, uh, well, listen, let's, we'll talk about Shawville later. Okay. Um, it's a nice place. It's if, you're, if you live in Dallas, Texas right now, walk outside. There's a Shawville weather. Location to, TBA, to be announced. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this weekend, let's talk about Shawville. We're going to be at a Longhorn Harley Davidson Grand Prairie over there off of I twenty Great Southwest. Got a little. How about a free bike wash in Shawville? Okay. Bikini girls for free. You like that, don't you? That's what we do our recruiting. Hand out our passes to come to the timeshare <laughs> at the bike <laughs> washes. But uh, bike washes. Um, also, uh, let's see. We're going to be at Family Power Sports. Over in Hirsch, they got the location over off of uh, Precinct Line and uh, Bedford Euless Road. Basically, when you uh, get to Bedford Euless, go uh, east about a half a block, and it's right behind the Target. Can't miss it, man. That family Power Sports, free bike wash from noon to three. A couple of hotties over there hanging out. So, uh, you know what that means, uh, Jimmy? What's that? It's bike season, brother. Yep. Pretty much on every weekend, you're going to find Sunbury girls running around in their bikinis, washing bikes, hanging out, doing something. Uh, you know what? In case you can't make it on Saturday, when you get out of church Sunday, Jimmy, you know where you can go? Where am I going to be going after church on Sunday? Go I often back, wonder this. <laughs> you'll go to the back nine. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, right there on Beltline, right between Midway and Mars, about halfway in between. Uh, I like to say um, about probably two doors down from Sam's Warehouse, if you know where that's at. Uh, the back Sam nine. Sam of the show. Sam, Sam of the show. Yeah, warehouse. Sam's Warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sam's got a warehouse. Um. But uh, right there at the back now, they got a new patio that's covered this year. It's so nice there, dude. They got new games they've added. Uh, Jenga. They got the Jenga. Um, they got PBR, which is nice. Professional Rodeo. Yes. You're talking about the Paps Blue Ribbon. I yes. Uh, they got pool tables, but bike wash from 2 to 5. Mm. Once again, free bike wash. They'll wash your car. If you pull up in a car, they'll wash a car, too. Go hang out with the girls, though. I think Natalie. Oh, Natalie is a strong, strong counter model. Tall. Very tall, very bosom, uh, what's it, bosoms? Big bosoms. bosoms. Yeah. Uh, then if you don't like that, the Texas twist, let's go for the Russian twist. How about a little Oksana? Get yourself oksana uh, <laughs> She'll be there. She, uh, They're two different type of girls, two different type of looks. She's a DJ. Her, her DJ name is Lala Bass. So, uh, yeah, she'll be there. Come out and meet DJ Lala Bass at the back nine. Two to five, they'll wash her bikes. Beautiful weather all weekend, too, by the way. Nice. That's good to hear. There's not a reason to be stuck inside. No reason to be. It's yep. good weekends. So, uh, all right, let's see. Uh, make sure you check out sunbrew.com, sunbrew.com. I don't ever plug my website. You ever notice that? Oh, yeah, you don't, do you? I didn't say sunbrew and sunbrew brand of it. It's people like, why don't you ever plug your website? And I, you know, it's a pro bono show here, man. <laughs> I'm not trying to look like I'm trying to sell or hawk something. Yeah. But we are. So, uh, <laughs> come out and see the girls for free. That's not a bad sell, is it? No, especially uh, for me, that back nine one especially sounds uh, exciting. Yeah, yeah. You're going to go get Oxonified, don't you? <laughs> PBRified, Oxonified. It's all you know. good. Yeah. Uh, man, that bar's came a long way, bro. I was there when it opened up. Not that it wasn't good out of the gate, but it takes a while for a bar to build to become 
you know, kind of the place to be at. Right. Wow, I got to tell you, man, they did it. Several bars there before did not succeed. But at the back nine, uh, my man Dallas, Matt over there, man, they've done a great job. You know what's really cool? I like the fact that the same people work there today that worked there two years ago when I first went in there. I think they've been mm -hmm. open three years now. But it's cool because, like, I know Tony. You know what's really neat? Tony's there. Um, I don't know her name. I forget her name, but she's a blonde chick. Definitely know who she is. Don't need to have a name. Just kind of look at her. What's up? How you doing? Mm -hmm. She says, how you doing? You know what they always do? Oh, you want a Dr. Pepper? They know my drink. After all this time, I go in there any time. And my man Tony's getting me a Dr. Pepper out of the gate. And even the girls that I don't know somehow seem to know I want a Dr. Pepper. That's nice. It is nice. I don't know how they know that, idea. but it's, maybe they've served me before and I don't realize it. But um, it's not like I'm there every day or anything, you know. I'm well, a busy guy. but You don't admit to it anyway. But it makes you feel good, though. When they walk up and know what you're drinking, it's, I don't know, something about that's definitely going to get you an extra dollar on your tip. Mm -hmm. And it does. It works that way. <laughs> uh, I feel at home there. Yeah. I know it sounds Little weird. Cheers, Phil. You ever have a place that uh, you go to and you work at and you just kind of feel at home? I like Cheers. Yeah. You ever go to a place where everybody just knows your name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, have you, have, you ever, have you ever had a date? You take a date out and you kind of want to make sure that they're impressed by you so you go somewhere where they do know your name you look like the cool guy? Huh. You ever done that before? You ever gone to a place because you know you'll get taken really good care of and they'll kind of address you and... Make it known that you know them, and it makes you look kind of. I've never done it like uh, in like a like a an actual process. I never thought it out like, oh, I need to go to this place because of. I just I, I've been in situations where I would invite a girl to an event because I figured that it would end up being fun. You know what I mean? And it ended up being. In all that. fairness, do you have places like that? By the way, I should have asked you about that before I just threw you under the bus. Um, no, in like Deep Ellum, there's a few places that uh I can go to. That and they're I all like, "What's up, to? Jimmy? What's up, Jimmy?" Yeah, they're not too messed up on all their drugs down there. To uh, many of them are. <laughs> many of them are asking who the hell I am for the fortieth time, hey, but that's all right. Are you, bro? <laughs> I've seen you before, <laughs> Jimmy. We know each other, bro. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I meet my buddy Sam, man. Sam the mailman. <laughs> All right, now nah, Deep Down's a good place. Um, and I'm sure there's not a lot of drugs going on down there. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's see. We're open to four o'clock, and we don't serve alcohol. So what is going on? What's that, Deep Ellum? At from two to four, those bars, those clubs that never shut down. Oh, are there a lot of them over there? Because I, mean, I don't know. There's anything to be honest. With you. I just know oh. there's places like that. So what's no, really I do know on? that there's one of the places that are like that, and they definitely serve alcohol until 4 a.m. But that's just because really? it's my favorite place in the world. Well, let's not let's not <laughs> mention them by name and keep, keep them going. Um, yeah. But yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I'll tell you. I mean, that's one thing about the back nine. If you ever walk in there, or if I ever walk in there, I, it's not like it's a big deal or nothing. But it, it is kind of cool when everyone kind of like, hey. What's going on, Brandon? You know what I mean? The, the girls are like, oh, I don't, you know, it, girls can't help but go, oh, wow, this this guy might be somebody, even if you're not. Mm. She doesn't see me tipping them five bucks behind the counter going, hey, thanks for saying my name a while ago. Right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you've never done that, never pulled that move, huh? No. I like. Uh, I think you've noticed, like, I, I haven't ever uh, done any real, uh, anything that has to do with game. I've oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your gamemanship is very sloppy. Yeah. Very, not, not much there. Yep. But I think you have realized that maybe there's a benefit to doing that every once in a while. Oh, I definitely understand that there's a benefit. I just know that there's not a benefit for me. <laughs> so I don't I do not do it. So yeah. You're not a good wingman. I know. I know. But I don't ask anybody to be mine. So, you but know, I thought we discovered goes... the benefits of all that. I thought we discovered Oh, no. I definitely there. understand the benefits well, of it. Why can't you be a little bit giving to people and help out? What's uh, no, I'll help out if I ever get the chance. I'll definitely be the guy that helps out. But uh, I'm just not going to be the guy that, um, you know, can I call you out on something real quick? on that. Yeah, sure. You've never uh, never helped me out before. Uh, in, one, in what uh, case did I need to well, help you out? Oh, well, I really don't need your help, but it's, it'd be nice to see you try or put forth the effort. It'd just be a nice gesture. In what situation was I in a situation that I would have helped you out? Oh, uh, we've, nev we've never been around girls before, out and about, ever. Yeah, but they're all girls that work for you. Like, <laughs> What am I going to do? Hey, have you met Brandon? Yeah, I work no, for him. No, oh, okay. You're wrong, first of all. You're wrong. <laughs> Uh, we've been somewhere, someplace, somehow, where they're, yeah, maybe you're right, dude. I, I do know all the girls already, don't I? Yeah, well, in most <laughs> cases, it's either uh, girls that work for you or, you know, you've brought up conversation and you're doing all right, so. All right. But I'd like to see you at least, I don't know, just show everyone's why you care. I will take that into account <laughs> from here on out. You know, it's just a thought. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that I was hurting It's kind of like you ever have a friend you invite because you, you got to invite them because it's the right thing to do. And then you're like, well, I always invite you. You know, that way they got to pay you back. 
Like, right. I have a friend I used to invite on vacation. I knew he was never going to come. Uh -huh. But then I can like, dude, I always invite you, you know? And now he feels obligated to give me something down the road, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you ever had that friend? Um, yeah, I'm sure. Maybe you don't want them to come, but they're there, so it's rude not to ask them, but you do it anyway because you know they're not going to come. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I had a friend growing up like this. Not growing up, like, years ago like this. And I was like, I'm just going to always call and invite this guy. That way he always feels like he owes me. You know, like he's, he's obligated, you know? Yeah. So I, I did that for a long time, and he never never took me up on any offers. But he was always invited. Well, that's nice to know that you're invited. Some people just want to know that. Yeah. That's like the cheer song again. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about, do you ever get in situations where... You know, because when what we do, you meet a lot of people. You know, I got to think you, over the years you've met people. You got to do many appearances when you're on the Jagger show. Um, yeah, quite a bit actually. Okay, now were you in a position where you got to meet people, or were you behind the board? No, um, you know, when I was on there, I was the uh, producer and had quite a few bits that I was um, doing, and so um, usually I would do like appearances. You know, sometimes on my own. So I was usually, uh, like, for instance, I would always end up getting the... Uh, Aren't you the big boy? Yeah, the appearances that nobody else would really work for. So I was always at the Gas Pipe or Sarah's Secret or Comics <laughs> to Go. Why would you, well, I would love to. That's where I would want to work at. Yeah. Oh, dude, I loved it. So I'm like, but everybody else is, like, you know, kind of shy on it. <sighs> and uh, so I ended up getting to uh, pick up all those gigs. So it was nice. That's where I'm like, I'll take that one, that one. Those would be my first choices. Yeah. You ever seen the people come out, like, New Fine Arts in the middle of the night? Yes, I have actually. Oh, dude, I, I would love to have a show there. I know those guys. I should call them up. I, and I've been there. Like, I'll take dates to New Fine Arts. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you're like bored, like, what? How? How do you figure out? You ever get the point where you're on a date and you're like trying to figure out where you're standing at? Uh, if you don't know, like, okay, I can probably take this chick back to the house and do whatever, or or maybe we shouldn't go there. Maybe she's not feeling it. You know how you should test them. They got to be just a hair drunk, okay? It makes it, you don't have to be drunk, but it helps. If they are always bring up new fun arts, and if uh -huh. a girl's down to go in there, yeah. then you're like, oh, okay, this might be going. This date might be going pretty well. <laughs> then if you go shopping in there, you know the date's going really well. Yeah. Okay. So if you ever get a situation, man, I should be getting paid by new fun arts for this. Um, if you're ever in a situation, and you can, and you can also play it off like a joke, like, hey, uh, let's say you're Jimmy. Let's say your name is Julie. Julie, oh my God! Look, there's new fun arts. We should go in there. It'd be kind of funny, huh? And Julie's like, oh yeah, he, he. Uh, or she might go, ew, gross. No, it's like, oh, of course I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna take you to new fun arts. So you can play it either way. Uh huh. You know, you can be like the jokes are about it. Go, oh, I was just kidding. Come on, dude. I'm not gonna take you. you know, you can play it off that way. But if they're down to go in, and you, you might see a whole other side, and they might feel loosened up. Now you put them in a, a kind of a sexual situation. Yeah. So the vibe starts happening. I, I can I tell you a story, Jimmy? Sure. Are you okay to hear this story? Because it involves uh, relations. I feel that uh, I might be okay. Intimate relations, Jimmy. Okay. I will tell you. Many many years ago, like last year, um, no, actually about probably three or four years ago, I remember dodgeball going on at Yucatan, mm -hmm. and me and a very attractive female were sitting there, and I, you know, we're, we're buddies. She she worked, for, you know, worked for me back in the day, and um. We were hanging out. It was, it was an night we brought the hot chicks to dodgeball one time, okay? They wanted a hot girl dodgeball team, so we took them out to Yucatan. So we're going by New Fine Arts. I'm like, hey, we should pull in there. She's like, oh, great. That would be cool. So we go in there, and uh, we did visit that little video room. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it definitely speeds up the process, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, I thought that place was gross and nasty. I'm not the kind of person to go to New Fine Arts out there, okay? But when you're with a date, it's socially acceptable. Really? In fact, it's probably preferred okay. uh, if you're with a hot, hot date. And um, yeah, man, the video room, man, I was like, I thought it was gonna be like really nasty and gross. We're just trying to have an experience, you know. We could have went in there not made out or nothing, dude. And it was fun because it's something we're doing together, having a experiencing. It's kind of like when I go to ghetto strip clubs, you know what I mean? Mm. It's just something to do. But yeah, it worked out really well. You'd be surprised if girls want to go sit down in the old video room with you, and uh, you're probably gonna get a little bit of action. Yeah, I would imagine that that's definitely on the uh, the table of things no, that are offered. No, no. I'm sure there's some girls that like walk in there and be like the friend and like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know what I mean, we're just buddies though. But uh, yeah, but yeah, they worked out. Uh, new fine arts, man. How about that? Very nice. Give them a shout out. They should be paying this once again. Um, anyway, so uh, that's I forget why this all came up, but uh, there you go. It was a good. It was oh, a good I, learning experience. I know I was gonna get to. Um, uh -huh. We meet a lot of people, and we do a lot of things, but um, we're talking about going on dates. But do you ever run across people that you just can't remember their name? Every and, uh, single day. 
And you, you know them, and you, you you know them, and you just can't remember the name. I'm one of the worst about names. You uh-huh. and I can hang out for a week, and I still could forget your name. Yeah. And especially when names are like, um, let me give an example of a name that could be like pronounced two different ways. Uh, Misty. Mm-hmm. Or. Misty. <laughs> <laughs> Misty or, what is the other way you can do that? Misty or, there's two ways you can go. Midsy. Uh-huh. I don't know, man. Anyway, you ever had those names that are real similar that could be like the Z might be there instead of the S or something? Man, I get so nerve wracked about that kind of crap, dude. Yeah. And I just and I just don't say their name. Uh-huh. I can't remember. Is it is it, you know, is it Marquez or Marco? I just can't remember, so I just don't say nothing. You know what I mean? It's like uh, last night. Uh, I was doing a show, and the guy that's on my right is uh, kind of new, so like I don't know him too well. They're both named Matt, but uh, the guy who's kind of newer, his last name is R A M O S. Hmm. So immediately I start calling him Ramos. Right. Matt Ramos. Ramos. Matt Ramos. That sounds perfect to me. That sounds just about right. Well, uh, it wasn't until yesterday, late, late, late in in the show, that I hear the other Matt call him Ramos. Oh, yeah. See, that's a good example. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God. Are you kidding me? I've been saying Ramos the entire time. And, like, I don't know how offended somebody gets by that. Like, if somebody was to say Jimmy Rian, I would just be like, whatever. You yeah, know? I would too. I mean, I, I'd answer to Brian. If someone said Brian, but yeah, uh, but we you know we meet some bikers out there, man. And I, I love the I love the depth out of the bike world, man. Love them. Okay, appreciate my our fans. I really do. I mean, when I will sit there and take the time to talk to someone, and you know, just because it means so much that they're that they're willing to like, you know, embrace our product, our brand. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And you gotta pre. I mean, that's what makes us have jobs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I'll have a couple of fans that maybe follow us from dealership to dealership, or they saw me uh, on stage somewhere at some bikini contest in Oklahoma. And, and I just can't remember their names, man. But I'll sit there, and I, I don't know if they expect you to always remember their name, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I'll sit there and have a good conversation with them. You know, and just, you know, as long as, you know, that's, I just think you kind of, you're obligated to do that. I feel good about it. I don't, I don't feel obligated, but I, I, you are obligated. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you want to keep your job and, you know, keep people interested in what you're doing, and I think uh, the more personable you are, the better. But I just can't remember their names, man. I'm yeah. just so bad, and I wish people wore name tags. I would, I'd be all. For, I don't know. I would never want to wear, wear one. I hate those things. But I actually would. I would. I would participate in a society where everybody wears name tags. I would participate in that. And uh, I think that I noticed it the other day because I was out at a uh, office, right? And I was supposed to be there for a meeting, mm-hmm. and uh, I was at the front desk. And for some reason, this girl, well, and I guess the company. Gives everybody name tags as they check themselves in to this place or whatever. Okay. And I started walking around the hallways, and I was like, hey, this is kind of nice. Like, as I'm walking by people, I know their names. I don't have to, like, you know, I can get right to the point, get right into conversation. Hey, Joe. Oh, hey, Jimmy. You know, like, we're, we're past that. We know who we are. Problem with that. Let me tell you one problem. Uh huh. Then you don't know if they really know you're not. They're like, does he just know me because of my name tag, or do we have a, do we have a, a, back, a past experience together? I still don't mind that. Because I don't really, you know, if we've had, like, crazy good experiences, Joe and I, we, we remember each other. You know what I mean? Like, but if it's one thing in passing, who cares if he's just reading my name tag? You know what I mean? Okay, I don't but, mind but that. But occasionally you can be thrown off by the fact that, um, you know what I'm saying, like, you might should remember a story, but you don't. And, you you know, you don't realize yeah. your, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you the um, the name tags, uh, they're, I think they're good things. I think we'll have bars, barcode scanners. Uh-huh. What are you laughing about? What just crossed uh, your mind? What story just came across your mind? You start giggling. No, like, just, girl? what if uh, like if Joe was to be sitting in the uh, you know the break room or something? I was to walk in, he was to be like, "Hey, remember last night, me, you, and Cindy?" I'm like, "No, no, what are you talking about, Joe?" <laughs> <laughs> I, you know the problem I don't like is uh, there are times when I don't want people to, to know who I am. Uh-huh. You ever do something? Like when it's you, Joe, and Cindy. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> every once in a while, like, we'll do something, and I'll kind of just want to be in car. I just want to kind of be by myself. And uh, when we're at an event, you got to kind of like, no matter where you're at, the bathroom, for instance, kind of have some privacy in the bathroom. But you walk in there, and there's always a guy that wants to come up and shake your hand. And Well, you and don't have, have to, like, take your name tag, put it on a stick, and put it over the top of the urinal, you know, so that <laughs> everybody can see it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you're going to have privacy in the bathroom. <laughs> you don't have to poke people as they come in the bathroom with I'm your, using, yeah. with your name I'm kind of using the bag. Like, some people on the radio don't know who the hell we are. They saw us, they have no clue who we are. Uh-huh. So it's kind of cool to, like, maybe they heard your voice for the last two hours. Right. But they don't, when you walk by, they don't know that's you. 
Uh-huh. And there's some benefits to that. That's kind of cool sometimes. I mean, because you just don't, man. It's just there are nights when I, like people start buying you shots after shot after shot, and I don't drink that much, man. And they just, oh, come on, dude. You know, they, you feel so rude if you don't take their shot. And in fact, they take it as a, a rude. You know what I mean? So that's why I take every last one of them. I'm sure you do, man. Now, uh, Sam, on the other hand, is not anonymous with his voice. Many times, I can tell you that we've uh, gone out to like a place. Sam started talking to somebody. And out of nowhere, on the other side of the room, they were like, hey, I know that voice. Like, he's, so they, he's got a nasally voice. Yeah, well, he has like one of those voices that is so different that yeah. people will literally pick him out from across the room. You know, well, so. hold on now, but uh, listen, they would recognize your voice probably. Uh, you got a very distinct voice, maybe mine too. But if you're walking in and you don't say nothing, right. they, don't know, they don't know you. I, I know what you're saying, the voice, but if I want to walk in and be by myself, be quiet, uh, they're not going to hear my voice. Right, you know, but yeah, I feel you're saying that. I actually had that happen to me in a a, a little Caesar's Pizza one time. I was on the phone. Lady had no clue what I well, she might have knew what I looked like, but I don't think she knew what it looked like. And um, she just kept staring at me, bro. Like, and it, it, this was a great experience for me, by the way. It really made my day. But it was weird because I was sitting there on the phone talking to uh, my boy Corey, and I'm like talking, like, dude, I gotta let you go, man. This lady's been staring at me, like looking up. She's short, looking up to me for like probably two minutes straight, just staring at me, in, yeah. in the weirdest look, like, what is going on? I, you know, what's happening here? So I hung up the phone, and before I could ask her, like, what is your problem? She's like, oh my God, your son Boo Brandon, you know, from the Pugs and Kelly show or whatever. Uh, yeah, and like, how did you know that? You know, and this is when I first got on their show. And I looked at my shirt thinking I had like a Sunbrew shirt on or something. Like, she's like, I, she's like, I recognize the voice. And she was she had me come outside and take pictures with the family and all this stuff. And then she looked over and saw that I had my car there in the lot. She's like, oh, there's the car I've heard about. Because Big Dick Cunner had mentioned something about my car one time, having girls on the side of it. So it was really weird when, for the first time, somebody just heard my voice and caught on in a, in a weird place in Oak Cliff, you know what I mean, yeah. at a pizza place. So it was really bizarre to me. And that was, like, really neat, though. I, You know, to be straight, yeah, I was, like, super, like, oh, that was so cool. You know what I mean? I thought that yeah. was the coolest thing ever. Oh, I'd you know imagine. I mean? I've never been picked out by my voice, so. Well, I mean, very rarely are people going to just sit there and be that close to you. in line. We were in line. Yeah. So it's not like she would normally have been that close to me, like, eavesdropping. But when you're sitting right next, standing right next to me, and it's kind of quiet, and they can hear your voice, I bet mm-hmm. your voice would get picked out. I was starting to be on the show every day, too. She probably heard me for maybe three weeks straight on a radio show. Mm-hmm. And when that voice is ingrained into your, you know, into you, then you, you know, you're going to hear it. Now, I talked quite a bit on that show, so that's part of it, too. But it was weird. It was cool, though. It was very, I was so stoked. I was like, oh, dude, I just got, you know, I thought that was the neatest thing in the world, you know? Yeah. That was uh, probably the closest I've ever been to have, like, a little celebrity-type moment, which wasn't a celebrity <laughs> moment. I was at Oak Cliff at a CC's, uh, whatever it was, or not CC Caesars. Um... Man, let's talk about some other things here. Well, we were just saying the mailman. How would, it's like the 10 o'clock news should be on, and we're it's 12.20. Yeah, well, he should be back here uh, pretty soon. I don't know how much longer it's going to be. But, oh, um, we were supposed to have a special call in. I should, I'm should. i going to send a text out. Um, are we set up to take call-ins today? Um, yeah, I can turn it on. Let's let's turn it on because I'm going to send a text out. We're going to have a special call in today. Uh, I'm going to need the phone number. Can you send the number out to me, Jimmy? I know it's 214 Seven three six. Do you know the number? Um, no, I'm pulling it up real quick. We should just get a sign made like real places have that have some, the number of the call number. <laughs> I, I could I could walk in the other part of the studio and get it real fast if you want me to, but we have no, dead air. No. Okay. Two one four seven three six three five six nine. Three five. It's the three five part. I get thrown off about three five six nine. Let's see. We'll send a little text out. We'll get a special call in. See what this guy's up to. Uh, he said he might have trouble calling us because of the uh, he has a child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who could who could it be? Everyone's wondering who could it be calling in. I just gave a little bit a little bit of it away there. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna send him a text. Um. Thought to, thought to talk to him. All right. So maybe we'll have a surprise special guest caller here in a little bit. Um, if we do, then uh, I'll have him post it on Facebook because people are going to want to hear what he's been up to. Okay. Um, all right, man. So so the news is going to happen. At what point do we think? Um, probably in about 30 minutes. Um, but also, if you would like him to call, just to make sure that we don't have bandwidth issues, 
I think it would be probably a little bit better if you told him to call my phone number, and then we can just route it this way. Oh, really? Yeah, because then we're going to get like a good, clear sound. Does he have your number? Um, I believe so. I don't know. Here, why don't you... Uh, uh, let's see. Why don't you text it into my phone, and uh, that way we won't give out your number on air. Ah, here, my phone take, just died, actually. Just take my... Uh, take my your phone's dead, so we can't even do what you just wanted to do then. Yeah. No, it's uh, charging right now. Okay. All right, man. So, listen, we'll get to the news. I know people depend upon the news uh, to get them through the day. Uh, I'm sorry, man. What can I tell you, man? The news is not happening on time as usual. Uh, Sam the Mailman is not in the building at the time. Uh, we're trying to get – he's actually out there covering a report, I believe. Uh, yes. Trying to get, there's some breaking news going on. If you live in DFW and the uh, – I guess you'd say the – uh, kind of like north northwest Actually, side of DFW. Not Dallas. to interrupt, man, yes, but he can just interrupt. call your number. Okay. And then we'll just route it through there. So that'll work even better. Okay, let me just retype. Re it's not <laughs> ready yet. Hang on to that. Oh, it's all good. Retext the whole thing. Like I said, breaking news. Sam's out there covering it right now. Hopefully he gets back in the studio. We'll get the full scoop. Yeah, uh, well, you know, CNN was trying to beat him out there um, because they were, you know, obviously trying to get the scoop. Sam was, uh, you know, fending him off uh, the last time I saw him. So, you know, hopefully he's going to get us the uh, the exclusive for the bar live. Oh, how great is that, dude? What if he had the – if he drives back and then covers it, it might be better if he calls in and covers it. Right. But let's just let's – As just, he's getting chased. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> how exciting is that, dude? So um, I guess in a little bit we'll, I'll text him and confirm he's going to make it back. And make sure he's safe. What if he gets arrested? Yes. Do we have to bail him out? Um, I'm not sure how that works. Would it, would it be okay if I just said right now that um, I'm probably not going to bail him out? <laughs> okay, fair enough. As are long you? as we know where it is. Are you? Um, I don't have the funds to, so you know, good luck to him. You know, wow, either. you wouldn't go. You wouldn't go pawn something. You watching the pawn? You know what pawn stars is, right? Um, uh, no. -uh. If you had to go pawn something right now, what would you be pawning, Jimmy? Let's, um, let's say that his bill, his bill is five thousand. You need five hundred bucks to get him out, or however it works. Um, you got to go pawn. You, you need five hundred bucks right now. What are you pawning? I don't know. I don't want to get rid of too much. Um, I mean, my guitar or my okay. There you go. That's one twenty-five TV. What kind of TV? Flat screen. Yeah. How many inches? Forty-two. Uh, we're gonna give you like. I'm gonna give you like one fifty. I'm sorry. Yeah. Gotta Good dump, luck, gotta, Sam. Gotta dump my money. <laughs> Hold on. We got we got one twenty-four. What kind of guitar? Huh? Uh, Ibanez. Yeah, okay. I'm going to give you 125 for the guitar's electric. Yeah. Okay, give you 125 with an amp. Um, yeah. Okay, give you an extra. Give you 170 for the guitar and the amp, 170 total. I'm going to give you 150 for the TV. Um, we're getting there. It's 320. Three, uh, 320. Okay. Well, short good luck, Sam. <laughs> you can't come up with no more than Where are you upon. trying to get with this? Are you trying to go through like what uh, I own? I Is really don't know really if, I get, to get to? if I get in trouble and jail. You can I have I'm plenty of other things that I can pawn, but I'm, I'm not trying to go through what I own. I'm trying to make sure you can bail me out. Okay. <laughs> I'll pay you back. All right. But you good. don't have enough possessions to bail me out, do you? Uh, no, I do. Okay. Then Suddenly, me... it's not in my best interest, though, so <laughs> I'm not really all that interested. All right, so you're going to pawn a uh, TV, 42-inch TV for 150 mm -hmm. Now, uh, guitar. Yeah. Say 170 you got nothing else to get Sam out of jail? I mean, I got computers. I got another monitor. Okay. I got... Uh, All right, you know, so we're but, there. You got you got yeah. a computer. What kind of computer? Uh, I got a bunch of different computers. So 50 bucks a piece. All right, so we're good then. I appreciate it. You'll, you'll be able to get Sam out. If you don't mind when you leave here today from the studio, I want to give you some possessions to take home and have value. So if I ever get locked up, you can go pawn them to get me out, okay? Okay. Is that cool? Would you hold on to them for me? So in sure. the case, yeah. Um, might be easier just to give you a key to my house. And uh, maybe a, a blank check, so you can just go to check, just go cash it for me. All right, dude. Well, at least I know if I ever get in trouble and you don't have stuff around, I'm I'm screwed. <laughs> uh, what else is that happening in the world of Jimmy? Um, not too much. Started up. Uh, well, I started a show last week, and uh, it seems to be going pretty well. Yeah, that's what happened last night in the studio, right? You mm -hmm. and the two you, two guys and a girl. Uh, no, the girl's not on the show. That's actually uh, one of the guy's girlfriends. He uh, lost actual uh, control of his uh, left leg over the weekend. So What does that mean? 
I don't know. No one knows what uh, happened to him. So uh, apparently he's he's uh, you know barely able to move his left leg. So that's why he was walking around like an eighty year old man. Why, what's that got to do with his girlfriend? You went you segue from his girlfriend to the messed up leg. Well, she had to come in because he needed somebody to drive him. So. Oh, so, so normally we don't have to put up with her. Um, well, yeah, usually we don't have her there, which made for, like, kind of an awkward show last night because... She was just sitting out there staring at y'all the whole time? And, you know, Matt can't go into certain topics. He can't talk about things in certain ways. Although, you know, he was actually pretty good about it last night, but it was pretty it was pretty funny. Y'all couldn't let her go to the green room and hang out? Um, I, I guess she just wanted to hang out in here. She usually wants to, like, kind of keep an eye on what's going on during the shows, so... Like a counterfly. She yeah. She swarms around bugging you. Yep. Wow, did she? Uh, it's horrible, dude. Poor guy. What's his name, Matt? Matt, yeah. Maybe I should have got involved last night. You know, I'm a relationship counselor. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have brought me in for that. Um, I mean, you know, we have a we have a bit of, of a geeky show, so you know, I like to keep it geeky. <laughs> All right. So, well, thanks for letting me know that I'm not part of that crew. Cause I don't, I don't want to be. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Wow. <laughs> what do you mean geeky show? Like, what the hell are you talk? I, I heard a little bit of your show, and you are talking about. Mm -hmm. Some, I don't know. We are talking about topics on the news or something. I don't know. I didn't really pay. Honestly, didn't pay much attention. I just heard y'all talking about some kind of news. What does a geeky show mean? What are y'all talking about? Uh, we do a lot of like web culture stuff. I mean, viral videos are massive right now. So you got like shows like Daniel Tosh. We'll play like some of those types of videos. Um, we'll do uh, kind of internet news things that happen like uh, in the industry. Uh, funny things that happen. Acquisition or you know. Um, uh, you know, all types of stuff. It really doesn't. Uh, torrenting was one of the topics last night, but then we ended up doing sex tips from the web. So, like, basically, uh, the top ten sex tips that I found on the internet. We ended up talking about those. That, now that doesn't sound too geeky. Uh, no, it's not too geeky, but it has like that web culture um kind of vibe to it. Yeah, so. like take my laptop, put it behind her head, put on some whatever, right? Some uh, cartoon porn. Uh huh. You know, is that what it's about? Uh, no, no, it's it's more just um, I don't know. I like to think of it as uh, like because we'll we'll talk about things you know scientific things, scientific studies, uh, things like the Large Hadron Collider, things Dude, like that. Yeah, I would never so, listen to your show. Yeah, it's it's geeky stuff, man. But uh, you know, people dig it. So I'd rather listen to the Big Dave show than your show. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you also watch uh, Jersey Shore and you know there's other yeah. programming. So I can't really say that I have a very high level. Uh, of uh, Would, if you were belief in your in your, you in your programming to, choices, you weren't paid to be here. You really wouldn't listen to the show, would you? Um, I don't know, be man. Be honest. Um, I think that uh, I don't know. I'm not trying to go down this road. Oh yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are. Um, You're not, but I am. So. If, uh, with with my show, I I told you this a little bit the other day. Like I move through, you know, uh, content. I I'm very ADD that way. So we like, the content we talked about. We went from Shawville to you hating the show. Um, yeah, but you know, I don't know. I have a. Uh, there are certain rules that I abide by in radio, in which you don't seem to be aware of. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are uh, these rules? Please tell me. It's not gonna be aware of them. Um, well, usually in radio, you do this thing called yes and. Uh, okay. That's one of the things where I, I'm not going into this because it, it kind of pulls back the curtain a bit. So, oh, let's <laughs> please let's pull back the black curtain. <laughs> Of Jimmy. Oh, no, this is uh, for radio. People that are, like, in broadcasting, okay. they understand how to set up certain situations, how to, you know, oh, so you're saying how to keep like conversation gives going. Gives tricks away. Yeah. It's like so. we're doing the, the, the hidden strings for the magic trick. Right. And okay. you can't really do that. Well, let's not do that then. <laughs> but, but in all fairness, you would never listen to this show if you weren't paid to be on it. I don't you? listen to any shows, so you should feel good about that. Just say that. I don't just, watch just or it. listen to any shows. You freaking hate this show, Jimmy. <laughs> I've sucked you into a world. You just have to do it because you're stuck now. You're committed to it. And, uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Screw you and your nerd herd. Uh, well, wow. I don't even know how to go on from this point, dude. Yeah. I feel like solo. Well, you know, it, it doesn't hurt that you're, like, basically just – I don't know where you were going with this whole pawning thing. Like, hey, how much are you worth, bro? How much are you worth? No, the other I wasn't day, doing The that. other day you were saying, uh, oh, are you not uh, self-sufficient? You know what, dude? Half the reason why I'm probably not financially uh, independent is because of this fucking show. show. So, like, no, I'm going to no throw F, the F No bomb. F. No, that's, it's, it's because of this. I got plenty of projects I could be picking up right now, but instead I'm having to deal with your BS. So, if I – Deal with it, okay? If you, if you want to find somebody who can be your little you know, lightning rod that you can deal with every single day, I'll become your engineer, I'll get you on the air, and then you can find somebody else who will sit here and like be your bitch 
that's what you're looking for, and I'm not going to be it. So no, but I'm it, looking for this. Now we're hearing the real Jimmy. Look at the hate in your eyes. <laughs> I was asking you not about your financial. I wanted to find out how you're going to get Sam out of jail if he gets uh -huh. arrested while I go. Right. And I wanted to see your creative way, what you're going to pawn to get there. Uh huh. It was nothing digging in deeper <laughs> than that. But, man, you just got like a lightning rod. Woo, my goodness, dude. You ain't got nothing sharp in your pocket or anything to throw <laughs> at me, dude. You, you used to have a shooting stars when you are a kid? Huh? You ever shooting stars? Have shooting stars? Oh, yeah. I don't have them now, though. God bless, dude. You just came out with just... And you used the F-bomb twice? You trying to get us a G4? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I, I'm scared. <laughs> and I'm here alone. Oksana's here, but she's in another room. She probably heard you yelling at me just now. <laughs> wow, dude. The, the rage. I'm just saying, man. The rage. Wow. The black, the, you're wearing the black shirt, dude. You're just pissed at the world right now, dude. <laughs> pissed at the world. You turned red. Very upsetting, Brandon. <laughs> you turned red right now, dude. And your your hair just spiked up even more. Did it? <laughs> yes. It's raising on its ends. If you had superpowers right now, you'd have hair gel that you'd poke me with those with your hair. <laughs> wow, dude. Interesting. All right, dude. I don't know where to go from that, man. <laughs> Uh, you know, I feel threatened for one. I feel uh, how am, how am I threatening though? Because your you, the redness in your face means you could unleash the beast at any moment. And like I said, for all I know, you have ninja stars. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, dude. You control the mics. Maybe people don't think, <laughs> maybe people aren't even hear what I'm saying right now. Yeah, I have you in queue. Wow, dude. <laughs> we went from trying to bail out your roommate if he got locked up, and I want to figure out how this is going to happen. Because I said I'm not going to bail him out. To just ultimate rage. You're the kind of guy that it reminds me, this, this is what I see those TV shows about. Like come, the kids coming to school pissed off. Well, no, th this has to do with the fact that like a lot of your content is based on this like alpha presence in which I usually don't care for. You know what I mean? So right. like usually like I'll come in and I'll, I'll deal with it until it just puts me in a rage. Like, I would never ask somebody what are all your possessions and then break them down by value. I Dude... F anybody who would do that. That's BS, dude. Like that's it's See, but you went too far into that. All I was doing was saying, what would you take to go pawn and get your man out of jail? But I, I even asked like midway through it, I was like, where are you going with this? Because it's not entertaining. I mean, like that's not entertaining at all. Like so like I would, there's no punchline that you're working towards. If there was, I'd be like, okay, you know what, I'm gonna take this on the on the on the chin and then he's gonna hit the big punch and it's all gonna be worth it. It's there's not, no be, punchline. There's not meant to be a punchline. It's like what yeah. you, it was a scenario. No, it was and just I wanna hear how you how you comfortable subject that like I really didn't want to go into. But you could ask it to me and I would have went right there and said, Well I would have took I would have taken uh, maybe my car and got mm -hmm. a, I got a loan against my car from VIP loans or something, mm -hmm. and I would have answered no problem. I would have said right. I'll take I'll take that bicycle over there, that helmet, and and that couch or something. And I would have went and pawned it. Well, you're I more of a possession guy. You like possessions. That's something that you no, no, become very aware of as you walk around this house. I'm not a possession. You're guy. wrong. Hold on, hold on. You're I wrong. get rid of everything that I don't use. You're wrong, which makes it more interesting though to see what you would do to get him out though. By the way. Mm -hmm. I'm not a possessions kind of guy. <laughs> How could you say I'm a possessions kind of guy? Well, uh, you got all of this stuff. You said that you ha you have a four bedroom house. You uh, the other day you said that you needed more room. Really? Because I'm a, I'm sort of a hoarder. Okay, so you're a possessions person, which is yeah, almost but, based on the description of a hoarder. So I mean, like that's you're a possessions person. Most it's of my, all right. Most of my possessions revolve around work. Have you not noticed that? Sure, but you still hold on to things. You want to make sure that you have things around, and that's fine. I'm just not – I don't happen to be that person. So, I mean, I guess if I really needed to get, you know, Sam out, I ended up having to, uh, you know, get rid of something big, get a uh, Okay, now I wanted – I just want to see how you're going to get there. Yeah. And you got mad about it, though. I wasn't adding up your value or your worth. I want to see – No, that's the underlining tone, No, though. no, no, no. I, I, think really that I think that you've, you've basically made yourself uh, immune to even realizing – what your undertones you're, you're are. You're wrong. Let me tell you what I was trying to find out. Let's say you had a ton of stuff worth a ton of money at your house, okay? Uh -huh. I want to see, are you willing to give up it? Like, how far are you willing to take it to get your man out of jail? I say your man, like he's a lover, but to get uh, Sam out of jail. Mm -hmm. Now, some people might have everything in the world, but... I don't even want to give up the TV for that, though. And okay, you're making me give up the TV, the guitar, the amp, like basically like, everything see, that I like. that's what I was getting at. Are you willing to give it up? Okay, let's push it. Now, here comes Sam. Let's not fight in front of Sam. 
Sam, I'm sorry. You walked in right in the middle of a big fight, dude. Thank you. It's, it got ugly. Thank God he's here, too, because I felt uncomfortable, dude. I don't want to be alone with you in your rage. You're the kind of guy that's pretty mellow all the time. You probably don't fight a lot. Right. And when you do, you're just going to go off. Sam, you missed it, dude. What would you do now, Brandon? Oh, Jimmy thought I was auditing, doing an audit on him. And uh, to get, by the way, to get you out of jail. Brandon was doing one of those things where he basically tries to sum up your value no. on the air. Wrong, and, uh, wrong, and then wrong. I called him out on it, and then he tried to completely change up the story and all that good stuff. But, you know. Well, hold on, hold on. I will say I was kind I'm of sure there's plenty more content to get to on. on this show. I will say I was summing up the value of your friendship for Sam by doing that, though. Yeah. And I wanted, that's what I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. And we found it. Are you curious, Sam? A little bit. <laughs> what, what Are you willing to deal with his rage to talk about this? I mean, do you, would you I'll like to know? just listen back to the show. All right, because you will... I hate to do this to you, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Sam, you listen back to the show. You're going to find out the value of your friendship with Jimmy. Why? What, was, what did he say? <sighs> Jimmy, are you okay? Can we get into this? Well, he was asking how I would come about a uh, $500 um, bail for you. If uh, you were to be in jail. It started with, w would you bail him out of jail? That's how it started. Oh, yeah. yeah. He'd bail me out. Okay. Then we said, okay, what, do you, what would you give up to get there? What do you, how are you going to get him out? And we started going through... Uh, he goes. He threw it. He threw his guitar at you, or towards you. Your um, I don't know what you say. Toward the cost, he's gonna give up his guitar with an amp, by the way. Okay. Then he, th I pressed him because he's like, well, he's just stuck. I said, come on, dude. I pressed him. He's gonna give up the 42 inch TV. Okay. So now we're up to, and I'm trying to put like pawn stars to do. Like <laughs> they, they don't give you nothing. They give you a little bit. You know what I mean? Like any pawn shop. So we're still short. So I pressed him. And uh, I forget where we went from there. I don't know if we had anything else to throw at it. Maybe a, some, some computers he had, okay? And I'm, cons I'm thinking because he, I know his computer here, he's not going to give this up, nor this other one. So I'm thinking these are old PCs or something. I don't know. But he's going to give up some, several computers. So, and your bell was at five. Well, to get you out, he needed 500 bucks. What did I do? We don't know what the hell. You've been doing this breaking story. What, you were doing news a while ago. You were getting that, that story. What was going on out there? What? You weren't out there covering a breaking story? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was trying to get uh, details on the uh, the car shooting. Oh, please do tell. The lady that dropped her cell phone and then swerved into another lane, and the guy got pissed, and she got back in her lane and started driving off. The guy pulled up the gun that he had in his car, and he shot at her, and her windshield cracked, and then she pulled off, called the police, and then they were able to track where she was. They found the guy and arrested him. Hold on. This happened this morning? Yes. Wow, dude. Breaking news right there. Has anyone else covered this story? Are we the uh, first? I think I'm um, the exclusive, except for I have to give the fact that I did hear it on KRLD radio here in Dallas. Okay, which is one of our sister stations, I believe, correct? Yeah. Okay, they're in conjunction with, uh, yeah, okay, excellent, dude. So we covered it first, possibly? Well, I was trying to go meet up and see what was going on, but I couldn't get anybody. Couldn't find the exact place, so. Well, you want to be on time for the story to make it breaking news. So you want yep. to get back here. Excellent. That's awesome, dude. Uh, at this time, I'm sure if Channel 4 or 5, all the other major networks are probably going to cover it, and we're okay with that. They, they might use yeah. some of our in information that we've gone over. Wow, exactly. breaking news right there. See, Jimmy? Very nice. Willing to get uh, arrested for that. Oh, I'm, I was willing to go to jail. I was going to pull out my gun and do a reenactment. Oh, Wow. What do we know? What happened yesterday in North Pacific with all the cops? Because I saw reports on Facebook about this, along with some one of you guys I think mentioned it too. We figure out what happened on North Pacific Highway yesterday. Apparently, was it not one of you guys that mentioned this that there was like all these cop cars yesterday or the day before that? I don't think so. I, yeah. I even saw it on Facebook, so we don't know whatever came of this. Like 15 cop cars heading down North Pacific Highway all at the same time in rage. All right, all right. Well, so listen, uh, Jimmy, are we gonna be okay? I think we're going to be all right. Are you going to wounds? Are you going to participate in the rest of the show? Or are you I mad? am. I am. I'm Sam. just going to rage over here in this corner, if you don't mind. <laughs> Apparently, every time I say something, Sam, that involves materialistic type stuff, there's an underlying plot against Jimmy when I do it. <laughs> is what we discovered. When really, I, I, he's giving me way too much credit for thinking when he does that. So. Oh, I'm aware of that. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> would you uh, would you give up your rock and sock and robots to help bail me out of jail, Brendan? Can, dude, I hate to say it, Jim, uh, Sam. I kind of said I wasn't going to get you out of jail. Oh, <laughs> okay. I pretty much said I'm sorry. I won't no, I, you know, that. hold on. You know, I'm saying that to be funny, but the truth of the matter is, is I, and I've got what I probably would give up quite. I would give up quite a bit to get you out of jail. Liar. 
No, I mean, I wish I was lying, dude. Uh, although I should learn from my mistakes. 500 bucks, I'm willing to do that, okay? There is a point where I'm not going to help you. But I did help out a, a, a guy one time. I told his girlfriend, run over here. Here comes Pugs. We got Pugs. Hold on. Hold on, buddy. I'll put you on one second. So, so is he on now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, there you go. Guys, guess we have on the phone all the way from uh, Dallas, Texas. Say hello, Pugs. All the way from, like, I don't know, a mile and a half south of where you are right now. <laughs> yeah. What's uh, I'm echoing real bad. Is that, is that normal? Because my phone's picking up my voice. Probably. Is this better? Yeah, that's better. I think my voice... Oh, wait a second. Hold on, wait. Are you kidding me? Am I on your speaker phone? Is that your speaker phone or cell phone that I see on the desk there? You, you just hit... You you just what is going on over there, you guys? <laughs> Are you seeing that right there? I plugged you in. Can you see well, me? Okay, yeah, I did. Okay, so now it's just not you know on speaker. No, 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 you're pl you're <laughs> plugged in. Okay. What was happening was when I, when I was talking, the phone was right by me, so it was carrying into the phone. I was hearing right. it twice somehow. Yeah. So now I put I you on speaker. Like you're on speaker. All right, never mind. Uh, hold on, let's get into this now. What the hell did I walk into? What what, what is going on here? Jimmy and Brandon, what are you guys fighting about? Say it, Jimmy. I think it's just a difference of personality. I mean, you know, this this alpha thing. I can, I can only I can only deal with uh, the I can only deal with the alphaness uh, so much. I think. The the alpha. Okay, so what you're saying there is that Brandon is uh, large and in charge. Yeah, he's one of those. He's 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 uh, he's a pro type. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, Brandon, and uh, what, from Brandon's perspective, where did this ignite? I mean, there was probably some talking going on, but and maybe some, some, some attitude being thrown around. But at what point did it ignite into where you went, oh, we're in a fight? Uh, well, I sense, <laughs> first of all, I sense it. Listen, Pugs, you know me pretty well. All I want to yeah. do is play off of watching Pawn Stars, and in my mind, I'm picturing us at the pawn shop trying to get 500 bucks to get Sam out. Okay, and I love the show Pawn Stars. So I'm like, Jimmy, what are you gonna do to what are you gonna give up or do to get Sam out of jail? Because by the way, Sam was out covering a major news story, and so he was risking being possibly, uh, I guess, detained for being there on the scene. And uh, there was a, apparently a shooting and such. So I just was kind of going, okay, you're gonna give up your guitar. Your 42 inch TV, and I was kind of adding the money up because I'm trying to get to $500. And I'm like, what are you going to give next? Well, apparently, by doing that, Jimmy uh, says that I'm uh, assessing his net worth. Oh, okay. All right. Now, Jimmy, let me ask you. Uh, it, it does sound to me, if Brendan said that, uh, maybe not directly, but in a roundabout, nuanced way, that Brendan was suggesting that you don't have a pot to piss in. Is that how you took it? That's exactly how I took it. And it's, it's, it's the underlying tone of 90% of his content. Not even remotely the case. I was going, what are you going to do? Find me some stuff. Let's get him out. I wouldn't... No, not even remotely. I want to see what he'd come up with. It'd be, to me, it's interesting. It'd be interesting to hear what I would give up to go get him out. Just uh, the other day, uh, I forget what her name was. She came in, and immediately Brandon went for, what was it? Um, oh, yeah, do you feel that you're uh, completely self-sufficient? And then immediately went into reasons why I'm not. <laughs> no, here's... <laughs> Hold on, stop it, stop it. Now, Pugs, listen, I'm glad we have a third person here that's going to be... Uh, uh, bias. All right. The the talk was about men living on their own or living with roommates. And as we're getting into this discussion, and her 38 year old boyfriend has a roommate, I start realizing that I'm actually discussing a topic that pertains to two people sitting next to me who are roommates. Okay. Now I'm not gonna go away from my thoughts on this whole thing, but I want to get into the fact. That, okay, let's talk about Jimmy. Jimmy lives with somebody else. Do you feel like? You're, uh, what's the word I'll use exactly? Um, stable, maybe? Uh-huh. And you came back and said you're not. Right. And that's fair. That's fine. You're under 30, and it's okay. But that's, there was nothing behind that. It's just the truth. Okay. You, you know what I mean? You ask you a serious question, you know, because you're, you're kind of doing your thing. Nothing wrong, with, nothing wrong with that. You know, you live with Sam, 
And we're just trying to figure, you know, trying to pinpoint the difference of uh, the two categories. Right. And I'm saying that I have no problem in going into this conversation. I'm more than aware of my situation. Uh, and I think that it is pretty funny as long as there's a punchline at the end in which you have none planned. Why does it need to be? We're just having a discussion. <laughs> Why is it going to be a punchline? Uh, because we're entertaining here. We're supposed to be entertaining. No, we're not. We're not. That was a serious talk with two females that are going through situations. We're trying to help. What part of entertainment is that to you? It's called helping people out, Jimmy. Mm. All right, all right, all right. Settle down. This is not for you guys to start round two. Uh, round two. This is just for me to sort of get caught up on the backstory, so I know what is going on with this bizarre mood. <clears throat> all right, here's what I see. All right. Um, First of all, Brandon, I agree with you. Uh, if you are a man above the age of 30, you really shouldn't be living with someone else. If you do, then it suggests to me that you have some sort of stunted maturity going on. Now, that is generally speaking. However, we can't do that with people. We can't put people in a corner because everybody's different and everybody's individual. In Sam's case, Sam is a grown male radio professional who has lived in every corner of this country doing his job. Jimmy is a younger guy who is also a radio professional, and in addition to these guys having a friendship and a, and a recognition that they aren't about to settle down, they aren't about to get married and raise kids and do that whole expected thing. They're professionals and they're in business together. I see nothing wrong with their arrangement. And, and I defended both of them because Sam, for one thing, owns the house, okay? He's a single man that owns a house, so why not have someone come in there? You know, what the hell? Nothing wrong with that, okay? Jimmy's under the age of 30, and he's out trying to, you know, do plant his seeds at a lot of places and do different things and try new things out. And I don't know. I don't want to say find himself. He's, he's, he knows who he is, but he's out doing different things, and he's enjoying his freedom to do so. So I didn't dog either one of them. I actually def said I – Okay, no, no, you, you didn't, but, but it was a generalization. And one that I wholeheartedly agree with you with. Yes, in general, men in their thirties should be, you know, taking that next step and be independent. But these two guys are a different sort of situation. Because as I said, Sam's a radio nomad. Now he's been here in Dallas a long time, but Sam's ready to pick up and take the next job in a major market that pops up. So he does he don't want to have kids and family and stability. And he's got a house and he's a single guy. And you know what? Sometimes it's nice to have people around. Jimmy's a younger guy, under 20, a radio professional who certainly is willing for whatever that next opportunity is. So these two guys living together, there's nothing wrong with that. I can see how that might be something that would hurt Jimmy's feelings a little bit. And Jimmy did it hurt just a little bit. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, <laughs> I think, no, Are you no. serious? Uh, well, no, it's it's not really, it's it's not something that I would go home. You were and... insulted by it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to suggest that he had somehow gotten to you. But, right. but you took it as an insult. Well, you know, it's it's one of these things where you, uh, I think early on, I ended up uh, getting on to Brandon. And I said that basically I'm not going to be your whipping boy. This was like three days into the show. And uh, he's done better. He's done better. But now there's an undertone. And I'm just saying I'm not putting up with the BS. I'm not going to. If you need to find somebody who's going to be your whipping boy, we'll get on Craigslist. We'll find him. But it's not going to be me. <laughs> he's, you're so wrong. First of all, you want to, so basically, had I made a joke out of the situation, I'm trying to have a serious conversation with two females that needed to have a serious conversation. I need to make a joke out of that. Is that what you feel like? And it would have been okay. Um, I think that there needs to be a payoff to, to most segments, yeah. A pay, you don't Call find, me old-fashioned. You don't find helping someone out in their life a payoff? The fact that we helped Andy and Marlena a um, payoff? That's not a payoff to you? You can't I, be... I think we should call them both and see if they both felt that their life was, uh, you know, Let's better. Let's I got one a date. Segment. I got one a date, and I got the other one son a date. I think <laughs> I helped them out, right? Okay. Yeah. Hey, you got you got a date going, man. That was that was very nice for both of them. So, anyway, I, I'm all sorry. Right, all right, hold on. Let, let me let me interrupt and say one last thing, Brandon, and then I will just leave it at that. But but here is what the problem is, and Brandon, I think it starts with you. If if it is your tone that has caused this reaction out of Jimmy, that I think the easiest way to rectify this is for you to work on your tone. And the problem is, is that you have a lot of crazy party chicks that work under you. And you are used to directing them in a certain way. I don't think you need to use that same sort of direction with Jimmy. And, and I think if you just simply change that a little bit, you guys are going to be fine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I don't know, Pugs. I've changed a lot. I mean, Jimmy, oh, you don't know, you you're, you're not treating you are treating Jimmy like one of your bitches. No, I'm not. I'm so that's wrong. What are you upset about? No, that's so true. I said, Jimmy, how dare you? Jimmy, just he's yesterday, like one of his bitches. just yesterday, did I not have a heart to heart? He's trying to. Did I not have a heart to heart talk with you and say, Jimmy, I appreciate all you've done, and we're doing really good. I'm really excited. Did I not do that to you? You did, and then you said, back to the back room with you. No, I didn't. I said, you might want to work in the back room because it's less noise and more comfortable for you. <laughs> That's Whoa. not true, Pugs. Jimmy, say that again. Back to the what, girls? Huh? Oh, no, I said back. Say that again. I said back to the back room with you. I'm, I had to go to the back, back room. To the back room. I had to go to the back room so he could be, it'd be quiet and he could work better. It's not like a, <laughs> don't make it out to be what it's not, Jimmy. How dare you? People might believe you're, you're – you see, he's making a joke out of this, Pugs. People might take you as being sincere right now. and You're making, you're trying to be funny. Yeah, that, during, during that's a serious fight. Sam would have jumped up and said, "Nobody puts baby in the corner." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, let's just move on. We're not going to get past this right now. Apparently, there's just too much damage. Uh, all right, the rest of the shirt. I'm going to want to go back to it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. Well, like I said, I, I feel. I guess I feel a little betrayed, Pugs. We want to talk about it for a little bit longer, and I guess I'd sit down and, and wasted my breath telling Jimmy how much I appreciated him last night. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> Well, look, a little, a little tension in a radio partnership is very good. So it's healthy. Don't, don't. We had a really good week last year. He got a little extra. We, we you know, had an extra event, got a little extra money in our pocket, you know. And I had no idea that he's offended by this uh, bit we did two days ago with these girls. I thought we're it's our counseling session. I had, he's he holding back a little bit there, pugs. He's letting just build up inside, and look what happened. He just unleashed the beast on me about thirty minutes ago. <laughs> Communication, my friend. You know, I didn't. I didn't hear a bit from a couple of days ago. But, but Jimmy, is this a situation where was was he cock blocking you, or did you think he was cock blocking you? Uh, no, no, no. It's nothing like that. It's just it's this underlying tone. Like, okay, so in radio, a lot of times you'll find that a host has crutches, right? If they don't have con, if they don't have content, they go to this. This is that, <laughs> where if he doesn't have content, I turn into the beating bag so that he can get to 2 o'clock. And uh, I'm just saying, either get some content or find somebody on Craigslist who's able to be this character for you. Pugs, Ooh. let's get this. Let's cover this real fast. Pugs, you know me pretty well. Do you not feel I was caught up in the moment of thinking about Pawn Stars and just trying to add up stuff, and I wasn't going past the point of thinking about Jimmy having money or not having money or anything. It was more like, what are you going to come pull out of your garage to go get Sam out? Do you not think that, that was really my true intentions a while ago? I, will, I, I know Brandon very well, and, and I will say uh, I believe there was absolutely no malicious intent. I don't think that he thought about it. It wasn't intended as an insult, but I, I can also see how it could be taken as an and, insult. And I, I, I can see that. I could see that too, but there was no intent. There was no thought. It was like, let's play fun. I, I'm curious myself what I would go take upon. And to me, if you asked me that question, it'd be interesting because what would I pull up? And I, I do have a lot of different stuff, but that helmet's not worth nothing over there. You know, mm -hmm. the stuff I'd want to give up isn't worth nothing. It's worth something to me, but not to the pawn shop. And uh, you could have did the same thing back to me. And you know, what? I got news for you. In my world, I'm the poor guy. In my world, I am at the bottom of the barrel. My buddies are living large, bro. And I am the poor guy. And if they did that to me, I'd be like, yeah, you know, whatever. It's, you know, I, it wouldn't have bugged me. Because I know that I was thinking about Pawn Stars. I could see myself in front of Rick and Chumley and uh, trying to, you know, negotiate the deal and come up with the money. So that's all it really was. I, and I'm, Jimmy, I'm sorry. Well, no, no, no. There's no apology necessary. Uh, you know, I've never seen this show, so I have no idea really uh, what you're going with. So, you know, maybe that's part of it as well. Yeah, I have seen the show, and, and uh, Brandon's analogy, uh, albeit ham-fisted as it may be, is pretty spot on. Okay. Right on. Well, maybe I'll have to watch this Pawn Stars. I think where this goes, uh, Pugs, you, like I said, you kind of experienced this with your show and your listeners. Jimmy is just now getting to know me the last few weeks. I'd say that three weeks ago we were almost completely strangers. Yeah. And so just like your listeners at first didn't realize uh, my intentions and who I really am, and I think you'll vouch, you'll vouch for what I'm about to say, is uh, you're gonna, you know, eventually you're going to get past that and realize that a lot of stuff I said is just uh, don't overthink it. It's pretty much what I'm saying it is. You know what I mean? Okay. And I'm probably yeah, one of the most. What you mean? Two weeks ago you were strangers, and now uh, a few weeks later you've discovered you don't like each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I think Jimmy has a little bit of a uh, a wall up, or think uh, I think maybe you came into this thinking I'm one way, and I think you're going to find out 
in three months and I, I'm a totally different person than you think I am. I think you think I'm probably shallow and vain and, and a dick and, uh, and think everything's a joke. And you're going to find out that really it might be entertainment to me. But I'm actually very sincere, and I'm probably one of the first people to pull their shirt off their back and help you. No, I, I totally believe that. I, I actually already know that about you. I know that you're a good, you know, you're a stand-up person, and I, I, as a friend, I think that it's great. But as your co-host, <laughs> no, I'm playing. It's not that bad. It's really not as bad as it's all turned out to be. But, uh, you know. Brandon is, uh, and I, I will vouch for him, Brandon is uh, an a super nice guy. That's not the underplay. That's not the you know. That, but that just really sums it up. I think that he's a nice guy, a good dude, and you're absolutely right. Stand up as hell. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to deliver it, and he's going to deliver it at 110 percent. Right. And above and beyond that, huge heart. I mean, Brandon, you know, you and me are we're, we're like best friends. Now that said, you are incredibly ADD, and you're always going at a hundred miles per hour. So that takes a little getting used to. Yeah, yeah, no, and you know it's funny. I took a AD medicine yesterday. I said, Jimmy, I'm on a different medicine today, man. I, what I take Adderall. <laughs> I go, I'm taking my Adderall today. It's going to be a little different for me. Super focused, and that was probably a different side of me. I don't know if you noticed the difference of me on Adderall or not, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's different, man. It's really weird. It's a strong drug, but um. But, uh, well, Pugs, let's talk about what you've been up to, man. What's been going on, bro? Yeah, yeah. You mentioned the Adderall medication. Right now there's a stampede of bikini models that are running to the bathroom to snort it. Oh, <laughs> right on now. Uh, we got Oksana in the house, and she's definitely asleep right now. Not running to the bathroom. Yeah. She, she's one of your best ones. You ought to bring Oksana out on camera a little bit. We could get her out of bed. We would. <laughs> what's she wearing? What's Oxana wearing right now? You know, break. I'll try to go get her. We'll, we'll take a break and I'll try to go grab her and see if she okay. wants to get in front of the camera for a minute. Probably like her PJs, which for her would be like some granimal. Probably the. Uh, oh. <laughs> she's real crazy she the way is. she dresses. <laughs> she is so cute. You know, she's my favorite. Yeah, she's got the prettiest eyes. I mean, her eyes are to die for. That's her best thing. Her accent's good. She's she's one of the most fun loving, free spirited girls on our program. Yeah, yeah, except here's the problem. She's Russian, which means if you date her, she has serious flip-out potential. Like, violent, violent flip-out potential. Like, she, she probably comes from a town where she lost her entire fifth-grade class get steamrolled by a tank. <laughs> 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 She's not going to be shy about putting that in you with a heart while you're <laughs> Oh, that's funny. You know, I've only, no, seen, you know. I've only seen her get upset a few times, and we've had some knockdown blowout fights before. But prior to that, I've never I, – I got to say, up until a year ago, I've never seen anyone, anyone have a problem like Sana, like hate her, have a problem with her. And then about a year ago, all of a sudden, it kind of started happening. And it was like, oh, my God. And I was part of one of these attacks uh, in our trip to Florida. And it was pretty bad. Very no, bad. I, well, hey, she's, she's my favorite. She's sweet. She's beautiful. She seems so cute. She's from Chicago, which I like, you know. But I'm just saying, you know, Russian chicks are hardcore. Let me tell you a real quick story about Oksana because I just got to say this because it's so unique and so different about her. Two, well, two things about her. She's one of the few girls, Pugs, that's part of Sunbrew that would actually take a bus to go to work and walk in the rain from the bus stop to get to where she had to go to and not think twice about it. I mean, that's rare that a girl would do that, okay? That is the most fascinating thing about her, that, that this girl uh, is so beautiful. She's a model. She's a singer. She's beautiful. She's exotic. She's got all this stuff going on. And she travels between Chicago and Dallas via Greyhound. Yeah. Where a girl that looks like that would have a line 20 deep of guys willing to buy her a plane ticket. <laughs> but she takes Greyhound. She doesn't like using guys for money. She's never been about that at all. I'll tell you something else about it that's really cool. First, she's so yeah, low. She's, she's so low maintenance. You buy her some, like, some anything. Well, she likes neons. You buy her some freaking rubber bracelets that are neon pink or orange or anything like that. She's, you might as well buy her a damn freaking Rolex. She's just as right, well, I, I think we've teased her appearance enough. Make, make sure she comes out in a little bit. I will. But, hey, one more thing, though. This is the best story of all. We're at Austin, Texas on 6th Street. Now, everybody knows 6th Street, that it's a big party street and lots of bars. This is the this girl shows up with her Russian mother. We're in VIP where everyone can see us. It's kind of a unique setup. Here's here's uh, Oksana. I don't know how her, her mom might be 60 or 70. And uh, she's hanging. I look over, and we are hanging out for her mom in the VIP. 
And it's just it's the most awkward feeling, weird scenario you've ever seen. And in her world, she doesn't even think twice about it. That's just, that's unique. That's different. That's cool. That's unique. It's not unique. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, I mean, what's, uh, what, uh, you do the uh, 105.3 show a few times. Really good, by the way. You're a sports guy. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. And yeah, you did. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, hold on. I knew you were a sports. I didn't know that you could. I don't. I don't know if I would have known you could do a show. I mean, I, you're, you're a pro, okay? And you're really good. But man, you really stole, in my opinion, from what I heard. You did an amazing, amazing job of sports on that show. Oh, well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. I like it a lot. And uh, Elf, it's the uh, Elf and Company show, at least temporarily titled over there on uh, 105.3. And uh, yeah, it was fun. Saw a lot of. So a lot of people I had not seen in a long time had my had my reunion with Sybil, which was uh, I was a little bit nerve wracked over. But uh, no, hold was, on, not, why were you nerve wracked about that? Well, I had you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Sybil, of course, was a big part of the Pumpkin Kelly show from its very foundation. She she began as a caller who, in the middle of the night, called in back when we were doing the show from Chicago. And after the first call, I turned to Kelly and I said, I hope she calls back. That girl is gold. And then the next night she called back, and she called back just about every night from then, uh, from then on. And uh, at some point I went to the people at 1053 and I said, look, I go, we need a call screener. And uh, we got this girl who calls in every night anyway. She is excellent. You need to hire her. So we brought Sybil in, and from there she became our producer. And now she's doing amazing things with NASCAR, and you can hear her on Richie and Grego. However, when she left our show, uh, it wasn't much longer before we left. And, and things, Sam and Jimmy, you can attest to, things were pretty, uh, pretty tense over there at that time. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Now, there are tense between you and her, or her and the show, or just her and the... I mean, what do you mean? Elaborate. Well, no, bit. just in, in general, that, okay. that place sucked. I mean, it was yeah. just... I mean, on the air, the content was fun, and everybody was, was having fun, but, man, when you stepped into those hallways, it was just like, Ugh. And And prior to Kelly and I exiting, um, Sybil had left our show. And, you know, it wasn't under the best of terms, but it was strange for me because Sybil had been as close to family in the in the eight years that I had been down here as I'd had. I mean, yeah, I, I was in a long term relationship with her sister for, for a period of time, you know? So it, it was it was really hurtful that she had left the show in the way she did and then Kelly and I left the station and she stayed and there was just really no reason for us to see each other. We weren't bumping into each other at clubs and stuff. So I, I had not seen her. And, you know, it's weird when you have estrangements like that because six months you're like, oh, I should pick up the phone and call her. And then a year goes by and you're like, well, I don't know, it's been a year. And then two years go by and you're like, man, I guess I don't know them anymore. You know what I mean? It just sort of steamrolls. So I knew she was going to be up there and I was sitting in and I knew that she was on the show that was coming in after me. And I was very anxious about it because I love her so deeply as family. I just love her... You know, I mean, she's an important person to me. But she's also, as I've always described her, a little bunny rabbit with razor-sharp teeth. So I was a little, a lot of people know. You know, Sam, Jimmy, you you have every right to be afraid of Sybil at times, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> she has, uh, she's she's exactly as you describe her. I mean, you know, she's uh, she's got, you know, she's incredibly sweet until she doesn't want to be sweet. <laughs> and then yeah, she's going to get she, things uh, done. <laughs> People see her and they think that she is just this cute little bubbly girl, and they don't realize that there is a boardroom assassin inside there. And she's she's an incredibly impressive woman. And and I was you know I was intimidated by that. But I'll tell you, we were in a commercial break during the Elf show, and the door opened up behind me, and she poked her head in, and she gave me a hug, and she said hi, Bugs, and boom, that was it. Ice was broken. And it was right back to like nothing had ever happened. Now I was, I was just so impressed that she made the first move, and I'm so grateful. Well, that's cool, man. That's awesome. And now, yeah, yeah. So, now so I would say that we are good. I see you posting on Facebook. So let's talk about every day. You got very uh, interesting little, I don't know, little posts throughout the day. I mean, at least ten a day, probably. Am I exaggerating a little bit on that? I'm sorry, can you say that again? You sounded a little muffled. I said, I see you posting on Facebook all the time suddenly. Like, like the last month, it seems like you really came on strong, posting little uh, 
little news stories and interesting uh, photos and stuff. What's that? What's going on there, man? What's that about? Well, you, you know, I mean, well, you're doing new media, and Facebook is certainly a, a part of new media, and I guess it's as simple to say that uh, everything is a stage these days, and I treat my Facebook page like an extension of my show. I try to post things and comment on things that if I were on the air, I'd probably be talking about, and I like to get into it with the posters, and we go back and forth, and yeah, I mean, I, I look at my Facebook page as, as an extension of, you know, whatever the Pugs Media brand is. See, I've noticed that sometimes I'll post something to get two comments. You've got some people like 50 comments, 40 comments, so I've actually been kind of observing you for the last week, okay, and trying to pick up on, like, what is going on here, and then what's the 11, I don't know. Of the day, but what is there any time they'll love it? Well, uh, uh, it's just people who show the others for some reason, some number that's haunted me in life, and there are uh, aspects to it that keep popping up in significant places. Uh, for instance, my, uh, my, my first wife, who um, was probably you know, the first person I was ever in love with, her birthday was 11 11. Um, I lost my virginity back in high school on 11-11, on Veterans Day. Um, I was born uh, on July 20th, which is the day that the uh, Apollo 11 landed on the moon. And when you look at the logo for Apollo 11, it's 11-11. And I've been telling people that I look at the clock every day at 11-11, and it's unexplainable. I don't sit there at 11-10 and wait. I don't, uh, oh no, that's not entirely true. Sometimes I look at it at 11.10, and I'm just compelled to stare at it until 11.11. <laughs> but it's just a weird, it's a weird numerology thing. In, in Facebook, every day I try to post at 11.11 just to show, hey, look, look at the clock. Cool. All right. I've, I've seen that. Have you seen it, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. Didn't we have a talk about this like yesterday? I think so. Like, what is that about? I mean, it's, I know it's 11 11, so I knew there's more behind it than that. It had to be because I wasn't catching the joke. So, so are you, like, are you, like, let's say it's November 10th. Are you excited about the next day or are you nervous about the next day? Uh, you don't know. No, it's, it's not. It's not that, I guess, intentional. Okay. It's, it, but it, on 11 11, I'll definitely take note of, hey, it's 11 11. Look, this past year, we made a big celebration about it because it was 11 11 11. And, and people were like, oh, is it a magical day? And I was like, no, actually, it was a bad day. And I think it was a bad day because of the extra 11. I think it's just 11 <laughs> 11 that works for me. It was just too much to handle, huh? <laughs> too much of a good thing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> hey, all right, now you've listened to, you've heard at least one show, correct? Yeah. Of our show? Oh, yeah, First, no, no, I, I listen. Look, man, the barlive.com, it's on every single day. You know, I'll be puttering around the house if I have a kid or something. It's on every single day. So, yeah, I'm a regular listener. Well, me and Jimmy were sitting around yesterday coming up. We have, like, postcards being made, and all of our, we're kind of going to the next step where we're getting a lot of uh, marketing materials done. How would you – I'd like to hear your take. How would you describe our show? If you had to market this show, how would you put it in words? Some bullet points. Um, <laughs> uh, can you say cluster on the air? I don't know. <laughs> okay, say that again. Write that down, Jimmy. Cl no, cluster um, F. I would say, um, you know, I don't know. That's a great Facebook thread. I'm going to post that question on my Facebook page and let's see what people would use. So you're you're looking for a slogan for the show, right? Yeah, we're just you know we're sitting around talking about it. I know we talk a lot about girls. That's fair. We do a lot of dating advice. I mean, I feel like it's a self-help show, personally. Do you feel that way, Jimmy? Uh, I think it definitely has those moments. Uh, we talk about everything from fitness. Have you have you heard any of the fitness stuff at all, uh, Pugs? Yeah, but I wasn't paying attention. Okay, I, of course not. Um, we, we, we're very into fitness on this show, man. We, we get weighed and measured uh, every two weeks. We get our fat check uh, intake checked. Um, so we're trying to better ourselves also as hosts on the show, okay? And uh, we've also got stunts. We're going to be doing the be the beanbag challenge, which I've learned a couple of days ago. That I guess I'm doing that solo. Um, so I don't know, man. I was we were trying to I was trying to put uh, you know a thumb on it. and I couldn't really do it. We're kind well, here's, of, here's what I like about it. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you why I listen every day and why other people should too. Is because like it's a soap opera. You guys don't. Every show is sort of a bleed over from the previous show. And once you listen to one, you're like, okay, now i got to find out about, you know, did Brandon and Jimmy make up? Because last time I listened, they were fighting. You know, that kind of thing. 
Oh, we're definitely a cliffhanger. We try, <laughs> we, we, we try to do the who shot JR. We feel, figure that worked for those guys. It'll work for us. No question about it. And now we're doing the girl of the week. So, I mean, so you don't think this show is, like, too uh, offensive, I guess is the word I'm trying to find? No. Toward women? Uh, <laughs> that's a different conversation. I'm not a woman, though. Yeah, I, I imagine that some women might. I, I bet you that there are women out there that have really strong opinions about you. Yeah, so I imagine that that, yeah. What I like women to think, though, is we're a self-help because we can actually let women see and hear what really goes on in the, the mind of men. And I think we got all the demo, you know, we got several demographics. You know, Jimmy's in his twenties. I'm, my, you know, late thirties. And so yeah. I mean, we're we're basically saying what people are thinking. And girls, if they're smart, they'll listen. They'll catch on to that, and they'll they'll figure guys out a little bit better. Well, you know what you need to do. I mean, then you got you got to do less topics and you got to talk more about yourself. Like you, Brandon, you you told me recently, uh, last time we spoke, that you are for the first time in a relationship with someone. Oh, yeah, but there's not a lot of content there. That ended pretty quickly. <laughs> that, <laughs> that lasted every bit of two weeks. Wait, no. well, wait, 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 you're not in a relationship now? No, that ended uh, two weeks ago. Probably you're like, just saying that for the radio. No. Is this another one of your relationship rules? No, 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 Jimmy. That's true. Yeah, it's over, bro. I haven't spoken to that particular female uh, since la uh, not, like, what, 13 days ago on a Sunday. And not spoken well, what, since. What happened? Man, she made a. There's just certain rules of uh, business. I mean, we were dating, and we were boy. Use the the big words, boyfriend, girlfriend, for the first time. And uh, but you know, we do business together, and there's certain things in business that you don't do if you work for me. And uh, she broke one of those rules and put it up on Facebook and uh, about hiring people, and it got into a fight. That escalated. That's just a very, very stuff, and she knows that. And I would think the girl I'm dating, who I spent the last year and a half dating off and on, would know this, and it would just it just led into a fight where she told me to f off, and that's about as strong of words you can use of me as the f off, especially when you text it. Hey, you know what's pretty funny? While you're telling this story, there's a picture of her scrolling behind you on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Well, that's that's uh, my relationship didn't last very long, man. In fact, we saw each other. That's probably over those two weeks we were together as the boyfriend girlfriend. We hardly we saw each other maybe twice or three times because she was traveling and doing things. So it just got it got ugly, man. Got real ugly. So uh, it's, it's it's done. It's gone. It's over. So there you go. It's the curse of the girl on my cover. If you're ever on the cover of my uh, calendar, you're gonna be gone. Oh wow! It's like the Madden right. curse. Yeah. All right. So so you may as well just tell everybody it's Belinda since you said it's the cover of girl. And she's oh yeah. Gone. Yeah. Well yeah. <laughs> it was Belinda. Yeah. So you know after trying to get me to commit for like a year and a half, dude. Like seriously, we had some serious stuff go on. I finally broke. I didn't had a girlfriend in like uh, 15 years. You know, a real girl. I've been 15 years. I only had one. In fact, in the last 20 years, I've only had one girlfriend. And uh, so here I finally broke down and did what I, you know, did it. And man, what a train wreck. Big mistake, man. Big mistake. Well, you know, I, I, don't, know. I don't know if I would sum up all potential relationships as doomed to be train wrecks. I mean, you, you date bikini girls. I mean, that's a different kind of thing. It's, and that's not a condemnation of them. It's a lifestyle thing. Any guy would have a hard time being in a relationship with a bikini girl. Yeah, yeah, it's it's extremely tough, especially when you're constantly meeting new girls. It worked out great for Jimmy, though, the first couple of episodes, because right when this show started is when I got in this committed relationship. <laughs> and so the first three or four shows was Jimmy getting set up on dates because I couldn't do it. So I was, you know, working my magic and having to not throw him at it because he can get his own dates. But I would find myself starting to do my normal Brandon Shaw routine and realize mid sentence like, uh-oh, I'm going the wrong direction. So I would live vicariously through Jimmy. And so, <laughs> so to the point where I actually took him, we actually all went on a date together. <laughs> Three of us. Well, well I, I think that there's only one thing left that can be done, and that is uh, we need to hear from Belinda. We need to get Belinda's side. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not. <laughs> <laughs> I got like, like, why not? If you want this to be compelling, if you want people, I guarantee you, if somebody is listening for the first time right now, mm. some, some of my Facebook friends or whoever, they're listening.
listening for the first time right now, if you have Belinda on to give her side of the story on the next show, they'll all be back. That's a damn good idea. Maybe we should do a couple weeks worth of promoting for this though, to, to build that up and get more listeners. A couple weeks. It's got to be yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah, while it's still fresh. We have, if she needs to be on the phone because she's too angry or something, all the better. Hey, you know, we've not, we've really not spoke in words. We've not had a, we've only had, she Okay, she, all right, well, I'll tell you what. I will reach out to her. I'm also friends with her. I will reach out to her, and I will see if I can get this done. And if you'd like, I will come in, and I will act as your therapist. I will work through this with you, and nobody's saying anybody's getting back together. But I think it would be interesting just to find out what both sides are. Yeah, but I want to say something. <laughs> the, it, this can hurt other people because she got kind of vind, uh, vindictive about the whole thing. And uh-huh. other people got involved and relationships were destroyed or crushed for at least a couple of days. It's got very ugly. Okay. Um, All the better. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't want any more damage done to other people that are innocent in this whole scenario. And there was damage done. There was See, this, this is where you are count your blessings. You weren't dating that Russian girl because you'd be dead right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am worried because she's staying at my house that Belinda might pay her some money. You know, I, mean, I got to sleep here. I don't know. I, you know, I, 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 you know, is she over at your house right now, Pugs? I know you're a fan of hers. Have you talked to Belinda? Have you talked to Belinda lately at all? Just out of curiosity. Uh, no, no, actually, no, not. No, not, I haven't spoken to her at all other than, you know, Facebook, uh, I see her posts. Yeah, well, when when can we make this happen? Because I know that you're going to, if I were to be you, I would definitely be trying to, like, drag this out for two weeks. But we have to make this happen while it's a little bit fresh. Man. Well, when's the next show? Today's Friday. When's the next show? Monday? Tuesday. We do shows on Tuesdays through Friday. I don't know, guys. She contacted right, me. Let's do she Tuesday. had her first. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, suddenly Fox is going to – I haven't had Pugs on in a while, and now he's going to be a regular to get this going. Um, <laughs> wow. I, dude, I, hold on. Stop. I gotta, we got to talk about this before, we, before you all kill me with this. Um, I haven't even had a text from her uh, until the, this morning. I got my first text. Oh, um, the text? The text said, hey, I'm coming to town because she, she had a friend come to town that was going to work for me for two weeks. And her and her friend went to Austin, and that's where the whole fight broke down. And next thing I know, her friend is not coming back to work, uh, not coming back to Dallas to work for me. And, and nor, nor is Belinda. So they screwed me really badly. Like, I was short-staffed last week. I made it through the week. I mean, everything worked out okay. Uh, but, you know, it put me in a, a, a very bad a, a bind. I mean, I had a lot going on last week. Like, I had a three-ring circus, more than my normal three-ring circus. Oh, and, dude, you've always got a three-ring circus. Know, but, but more than normal, though, more than normal. I think Jimmy... All right, you know, we don't, we don't need the backstory. Okay, so, right. so you guys texted, or it's good that you're not having any communication. It'll make the first, it'll make the first time you see each other all the more awkward and awesome. Yeah, I, I suppose so. I don't know, man. I got to think about this. I, I think I'm willing to do it. No, Brandon, look, you're doing a podcast. Do you want to build listeners? Do you want to create content that people can't turn away from? This is it. This is what you have to do. And if you're not willing to do it, then step away from the damn microphone. <laughs> I love the way he's instigating me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm probably down for it. You Can know, you imagine if you were on a reality show and you told the reality show producer that you didn't want to go into this? You'd be gone. Yeah, I know. I know. But unfortunately, this is my show, and I can't control things. So it's like oh. I, can, I can stop my train wreck from happening. Um, you know, I, I think, I, Brandon, I I think Brandon, hold on. I think Brandon is understanding for the first time, and I love your brother, but you're understanding that doing this is sometimes really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's not as easy as it looks. Now, hold on. In all fairness, I opened up on your show quite a bit, more than I ever ask, thought ask I would. any of my ex-wives. <laughs> I mean, I don't want people to think that I hold back, because on your show, I was very open about a lot of touchy subjects that were probably uh, pretty racy about my, my lifestyle. They could paint me in a bad light, and I was very forthcoming about all that stuff. But this is a real serious one. I, I, I'm, I'm down for it. I'm down. You're no, gonna, no, you know what? On, on my show, you felt comfortable doing that because I framed it in a wider context. Everybody has little snippets from their past that if left alone and heard solitary would make them look bad. But 
I let people get to know who you really were. So that once you started being, you know, honest about things, people put it in proper context. They went, you know, yeah, but he's a good dude, and so a lot of bad things happen. And so, I mean, that's what you have to do. This is all part of the context of who you are and what this show is. I feel like there's going to be, I feel like the only way I can do this, though, is to let people, it's almost like I'd have a 30 minute talk session about to explain. Be more in depth about why things were the way they were between me and her because people are going to hear part of this and just immediately go you know they're going to put an X across me without knowing yeah. all the circumstances because you it's a we had a very no, 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 that, that's why that's why you someone like me or somebody who can be a mediator because no one wants to sit through that no offense no yeah. one wants to sit through <laughs> you know 20 minutes of you going on and on about how what a good guy you are and how you brought roses for all your other girlfriends nobody wants to hear yeah, that I know that I'm just saying and, and I understand what you're talking about but I'm just saying like there's definitely some areas of uh, our relationship that people are going to frown upon but not understanding the whole side of the story you know the full story so I I'm down dude I'm down let's do this okay I mean, you know, we gotta, it is we, well hold on we do got to contact her and Pugs you going to contact her yeah yeah I'll work that out <laughs> Oh, oh no, another chore for the weekend. I've got to try and make contact with a bikini model. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, dude. This is so not going to be good. Awkward <laughs> is good for radio, usually. So <sighs> it'll work out. Wow, this is so not good. I, for the audience, it'll work out. You know, it's funny because she texted this morning, and the, the text is very uh, generic, like very uh, business like. Like, I have some stuff. You want to send it back, whatever, whatever. And, uh, you know, I haven't texted her. I haven't given in. And, like, you know, of course I, I've thought about her. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. it'd be unnatural to say, oh, I've never thought about her. Now, you know, but uh, I don't know. This, all right, this, this could be weird. Just do your thing, man. Do your thing. Uh, look, let me just give it a minute and ask you a question. Now, you and I, we've talked, and I know more about the backstory of this relationship than just about anybody else. Would you agree? Yes, yes. Okay. Now, I mean, I, I, would you say that she feels that maybe you were disrespectful of her? Because I've told you that. I've said, you know, you got to treat a girl. You can't just say, this is my girlfriend. You've got to earn it. You've got to act like a boyfriend. Yeah, but here's the, I, I did. I mean, I invited her to move into my house. That's a pretty major step. Yeah, so you didn't have to drive to Banger anymore. <laughs> No, no, that's not it. No, no, that wasn't it at all. Um, I mean, I'm still business. I'm still big business right now. It was just more of a uh, let's let's be around each other a lot because that's the only way it's going to work. Is where if you're just kind of around because yeah. my life's so busy, it's like it's going to sound horrible, but it's like to fit somebody in, it's they got to be accessible. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, I, no, look, hey, hey your, your mistake was missing business with pleasure, man. You can't date your, you know, drug dealers don't do their own product. So what's going on? That's your problem. Yeah, but what, who do I date them? Because all I need is bikini models. That's what I do for a living. That's what I'm around 24 seven. Yeah, well. I mean, when that's like, here's the I meet girls that aren't bikini models, but they look good enough to be one, so they become one. So it's no matter what happens, it's gonna it's gonna turn into that. What about like a bartender, maybe that has no aspirations to be a model? If You're she, around a lot of good looking bar girl female bartenders. I, really not. I mean, there's there's a few. I don't know. I'm pretty picky about. I don't know, man. If I'm going to date a girl full-time, it's I'm really picky. I mean, I really am. I mean, granted, I've not been picky in certain circumstances, for sure, but I don't know, man. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Well, yeah, I think I think you two people are fascinating, and you know that because I've talked to you about it at length over the past year or so. I think we just need to agree uh, to do this. I mean, look, it is perfectly acceptable to sit there and say no comment. You don't have to reveal anything that you don't want to reveal. Okay. But, you know, give, give us all a chance to ask the questions. All right. All right. I, I think I'm, I'm up for it. I just don't want to – I don't want this to be at the expense of other people's lives. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> yeah, primarily yours. <laughs> no, no, stop. No, no, no. I mean, I don't want other people to be hurt or damaged from this. What, what I want me – our fight that, that split us up was between me and her and only me and her. Uh, there's no one else involved. I don't want other people brought into this just for the help, just to be you know malicious and, All right, well, and destroy them. I, I don't think there's going to be any malice involved. But then, then again, I would yes. say step away from the microphone because if you are trying to do this kind of radio, you've got to be willing to lay yourself bare. 
You, hold on, you say no malice. I tell you, it already happened to a very, I mean, to a very severe situation went down. And, and all right. Well, I think I think I think we're done with this topic. But let's, right. let's work on that. And I'll work on it. And you know, we'll just leave people wanting to know the rest. Yeah. All right. We'll do that. I am excited to see how this works out. And you're definitely going to be here to be the uh, moderator, Pugs. Yeah, absolutely. Just, nice. Uh, we, I have to check my schedule because it's kind of crazy, but uh, I'll be, we'll be sure and work it out. It'll be next week. Nice. All right, let's talk about a couple things. Uh, Pugs, you been watching the Jersey Shore? Uh, you know what? I, I have not been watching Jersey Shore this season, and, and I'll tell you why quickly. I have found that there are certain shows that I would watch when I was married that are just too gay to watch when I'm single. <laughs> and you think Jersey Shore is too gay to watch? Yeah, yeah. There are some shows that are okay that I can justify watching. Like, I can justify watching The Real Housewives on Bravo when I've got a wife. And I'm married. You know, but as a single guy living alone in a bachelor pad, no. I can't be holed up on Wednesday nights watching Real Housewives. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, I, I'm a single guy living in my house. I, I appreciate Jersey Shore. But um, I know Sam watched it. Did you watch the uh, reunion show? Do you want to stick around, Pugs? I'd like you to stick around. You got, you got it. Well, um, yeah, yeah. I, I have to say, though, I don't know. Is this sounding okay? Because I can really hardly hear you guys, and I'm just trying to muscle through. I can hear you. So I, I don't know how this yeah. is sounding on the air. No, I, I've got people that have been texting me, and they're hearing you just fine. Okay, good. So uh, I can hear you fine. So uh, uh, let's real quickly, let's talk about uh, last night, the uh, reunion show there, Sam. I don't oh, watch part the, of it. The situation is a baby reunion show. Oh man, well, he really he just got up like a big idiot and walked out of the studio. I mean, this guy's the biggest crybaby I've ever seen. To be such a badass and like a, you know tough guy that don't give a damn when he's just he's Mister Cool, he doesn't carry himself very well. No, he can't. Oh, oh, wait, the, who are you talking about? The situation. The situation. He couldn't understand why everybody oh, yeah. hates him. Well, I mean, is there anything about that guy that would suggest to you that he would behave? Right. <laughs> He's a total douchebag. And a drug addict. Apparently so, yeah. But I mean, the Pugs last night, the situation got up and walked off the set because people were saying they don't like him. You know, if you're such a, I don't care and, I, and I'll screw people over, shouldn't you be having a thicker skin than that? You know, well, especially on public I mean, TV. I mean, yeah, but just boil it down to its core. That's being a baby. He's yeah. a baby. He's an immature grown man. He's a baby. Is do you feel like is it upsetting to you and same the question for you too that he's the guy making the most amount of money at least currently on that show being the way he is? No, he's not making the most amount of money. That DJ Paulie is. Well, he is now, but but for for a while their situation was probably the top earner, but maybe now he's second though. But listen to this. You know that DJ Paulie does DJ uh, uh, guest appearances at clubs and gets two hundred thousand dollars for the night. Wow, I did not know that. I, kn I knew he did stuff for Britney Spears. I knew he got like 50000 did not know it was $200,000. 200000 Yeah, I think the rest of those guys, they get like thirty grand just to go party for a couple hours at a bar. But DJ Polly will come in and DJ your, you know, whoever, Vegas or L.A. or Paris or London or even, you know, even like the Far East. He was over in Tokyo. And they give him $200,000 for the night. Now, Sam, when we pulled up their, their worth, did you pull up Polly D? Did we find him? Uh, I think they were all kind of even, but I I don't think that's been updated because he's got the own, his own show now, and he did that tour with Britney Spears last year too. So I would think Paul D, like Pugs said, is making the most. Well, what do you think about the comeback now, Pugs? You, in case you're not aware of this, they're going to have another season of Jersey Shore. We feel like it's probably best that it should have ended, okay? Because everyone's in a relationship. Snooki is going to be pregnant. What is she going to be pregnant? You know what I mean? And uh, it, I think it's just it's played out now. What are your thoughts on that? Well, my my problem with that show is the same that it's always been. They, any problems that they're incurring with the cast of knuckleheads is because they made the mistake of making them stars. Jersey Shore should have had a new cast every season, the way the real world did. See, the real world didn't have to deal with this kind of BS because they didn't allow any of these people to make themselves stars. They were gone after one season. Yeah, but, but uh, that's, also, that's also the theory that Lord Michaels used on Saturday Night Live. That's why he would change the cast. He didn't want any divas or, you know, jerks. But, but being the jerk and being the diva is what makes the show, though. Wouldn't you agree that the fact that they're such knuckleheads and, and, and jerks and asses that, you know, that's part of what we're tuning in to watch is them being a train wreck? 
No, I disagree. I think that in the beginning they were knuckleheads and they were jerks and there was something likable about them because they were just knuckleheads and jerks. Now they're rich, entitled, stuck-up knuckleheads and jerks, and that's not likable. Yeah, you know, I will say it was a lot more of an effort put forth to get girls to come home in season one than, than it is now. Girls now just come home, period. I mean, it's, it's not a problem for them. Mike definitely struggled the first season to get uh, any kind of hot action, you know, in his bed. Now they just free willing to come, you know. Anyway, uh, let's let's move on. What about GCB? You watching the GCB at all? Probably not. Too much of a chick show. Well, uh, what, what is that? The uh, Good Christian Bitches, that one? Yes. Uh, yeah, you know what? I've seen all the episodes except the most recent one. So I guess, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I guess I've seen two or three episodes. Yeah, and you, are you out on it? Are you still going to be committed to it, or what's the story? Uh, I don't know. I, I just, uh, you know, I have this park. I live over here in the Park Cities, uh, which is, you know, right in the area where that show is supposedly set. And I go to this park with my three-year-old, and, and I, I actually interact with these types of women, you know, at the park. And it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's just so, it's so much. It's, it's such an awful terrible sort of attitude to have that these people have. And I don't really know if supporting the show is a great idea because all it does is paint where we live as being this little pocket of Highland Park. So I'm kind of like, you know, F that. I'm with you on that one, actually, because every single time that I hear that there's a TV show that's supposed to be centered in Dallas or Texas altogether, I just want it to go away immediately because it's never going to make us look good. No, no, it won't. They always play to the most... Uh, obnoxious stereotype, you know, and and the problem is, is that there are people who embrace that stereotype. There are people who want to be the uh, ridiculous Highland Park Real Housewife type, you know? and, and that says a lot about us as well, I think. See, I'm drawn to it, though, because I can judge the show and go, well, that's real, that's not real. I, I see the humor in it, personally. But I got to tell you, this is one of the few times I think I watch a show because I'm for whatever reason, just strongly attracted to the main character. I think that the girl, that lady is beautiful. The blonde with the two. Oh, Leslie Bibbs? Yeah, Leslie Bibbs. Man, Leslie I am, yeah. I'm just so drawn to her character that I think it's the first time I've watched a show based on, man, that girl's attractive and I'm just really into her. And I'm, I'm, really, I'm not that way, Nolly. You know how old she is, Brandon? She is so old for you. Oh, I know she's older than what I normally would date. How old is she, though, really? What's her age? She's like 30. Say again? She's like 40. Wow, she looks great, though. I'm just attracted to her, man. I like that she's a strong woman. She's standing up for herself, and she's not cleaned up her life, and she's, you know, I, that's why I watch the show. It's for her. Yeah. All right, so she, she's, a, she's a good role model. Yeah, well, she is, she's the voice of reason. She's the girl that used to be the Highland Park snob who went out in the real world got her ass handed to her, and now she's crawling back home to where she's from, and she's now recognizing that all of these people that she was once the leader of are terrible people. So I guess from that perspective, it's an interesting show, and I don't hate it. I just, you know, I just get a little bit queasy whenever I see our town of Dallas being represented in that way. I know so many women, though, that I grew up with that are, like, from when I went to a Garland School, Lakeview, that have turned out to be just like these ladies. They're not that severe, but they're really close to it. They're all pretty well. Healthy. They all have these. They forget they used to come over to my apartment when they were seniors and party and do crazy stuff. And I mean, I remember how they really were. And so I find the humor in that. But hey, does that does the uh, lead bitch on that show, the main one that goes to church, where well, they all go to church, the main one that look like she looks like Jamie Presley? You notice the difference? Uh, you mean Kristen Chenoweth, the little short one? The short one, yeah. Doesn't she look just like the, the chick from uh, My Name Is Earl? Um, yeah, I guess sort of. Yeah, uh, Christian Chenoweth is like a weird chick in that she's extremely famous for for being a Broadway person. She's a she's a singer. That's what she's she's a singer and an actress. But she's a really good singer, which is I think why they always have her in the choir on the show. But she's hot. But dude, I gotta ask you the question: How short is too short? Because she's like not even five foot tall. Okay, t to have sex with her or to take him a date. Just for anything. I mean, <laughs> at what point do you stop thinking you're with a midget? Well, hold on. There's a difference there. Having sex with somebody, you know, you can go much shorter, okay? Because you're in a laying down or whatever position you're in and you're naked. And it's not so important that the height's not as important, okay? There might be a benefit to her being a little like that, okay? But 
Uh, for me, if a girl's under five foot four, it probably isn't going to happen. We're not going to go on a date. Let's put it that way. I mean, maybe, but it's just too odd. I'm six foot one. Five four is in the under is not happening. Jimmy, what do, what do you think? Well, how short is too short? Because you're a tall guy. Um, I don't know. I kind of like short girls, though. So I don't know how short that would end up being. But, like, would five feet be like, right about would be here? Well, you're six what? Six feet? Six one, somewhere around there. Yeah, a little bit low. Like your ex-girlfriend, Danielle. She was only like five feet, wasn't she? And that's the top of her head, Jimmy. That's the top of her head right there. Yeah. Yeah, she'd oh, have to be like right around like five two or something, five three, somewhere around there. That would actually be right about perfect for me. I like short girls. So yeah, you know, my my wheelhouse is like five seven to five ten. That's that's what I like. Really? And now tell yeah, me, how, how tall are you? Are you five eleven, six foot? What are you? Who me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm six foot exactly. Okay. I, I hear you, man. There's something about a girl that's like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, that really, I, I noticed with some women I know, I was like, man, that's that's the difference. She's got about an extra two inches, and that two inches makes a really big difference. Her presence is stronger. Mm -hmm. She's slender. It, it's more slenderizing. But uh, I'll tell you right now from hands-on experience, when I was in seventh grade, uh, I one of the reasons I uh, split up with my girlfriend is it bugged me that I shot up like a rocket that year, and my girlfriend was only five foot tall. Mm -hmm. And I saw a picture of us together. I was like, that just doesn't look right. It's not where I need to be at. <laughs> so that's when I was in seventh grade. That's when I also worried about one day she's going to get fat. And I, that's when I really started to realize all those things in my mind uh, that we think about with women. Yeah. So, uh, all right, let's talk about something else here. Uh, Pugs, are you going to be able to handle yourself in a mature way without embarrassing me? If, if I have you on the show the same day as I have Glenn from uh, Most Eligible Dallas, Oh, Special Glenn? <laughs> Special Glenn, the, uh, the name that we gave him because he seemed just a little bit slow on the uptake the, on the show. The yep. name y'all gave him, not hey, me. Now, Pugs, have you heard the backstory on this? Uh, no, no, I haven't, Tim. Okay, Brandon the other day, I think it was Tuesday, was all excited, telling us that he got a Facebook message from this guy. Wouldn't tell us who, just said he was you know, on the show. Now they're like BFFs. They've exchanged phone numbers and texts, and they're going to go out, and they're going to pick up chicks together. And he's just so excited about being able to hang out with this guy now. He feels like this guy is going to be his new best friend. <laughs> well, hey, hey, you know what? And there would be nothing wrong with that, because from the first time we all saw Glenn, Brandon has been his most, uh, God, hardcore defender. I mean, we... We noticed very early on, look, here's my thought. I always said that I thought Glenn was stoned all the time, which was confusing to me because he's a, he's a former NFL player. And, and at the time, he was trying to get back in the league, I believe. And I just thought, man, he's so dopey. He is so, you know, and Brandon was like, no, man, he's just cool. And, and you're right. I mean, he is chill. But everyone else was such type A personalities and so aggressive that he came off as, you know, a little bit more, you know, dopey by comparison. And, and maybe dopey isn't the best word. But, yeah, that's why we started calling him special. Humorously, we started referring to him as Special Glenn. Now, his buddy that was on the show was deserving of that, okay? And I hope I don't hang out with that guy one night after this comment. But remember his buddy that was on the show and he went on the, the date with the, the cute blonde Skyler? Yeah. Remember that episode? Yeah. And he's like, uh, I ride a bike. I want a BMX or something. It, it was pretty severe. And he, he got that guy was deserving of whatever y'all said, okay? I just felt Glenn was not. So. But, yeah, we're going to try to have him on the show, and I'd I'd, ha I'd ask you, you know, just kind of comment down on some of the comments. Just, you know, I'm sure he'd laugh at it, though. This guy's probably heard worse. The, some of the stuff that Pug said is very hurtful. <laughs> Did y'all ever listen to the show when, he, when Pugs and them would talk about Glenn? What kind of things would he say? Like like the special part, and it, they're dopey, and, and it wasn't just pugs; it was other people <laughs> that would make the comments too. Who else was a uh, part of that? Amel, maybe or somebody, or yeah, probably Amel. Uh, yeah. Ke Kelly, I don't know, but I just want to make sure. I mean, that, we're starting fresh with this guy. I don't want to run him out of the off the show. Well, look, you're, thing. If you're going to go on, a, if you're going to go on a reality show, uh, especially a reality show that is going to attract the kind of uh, criticism that those kind of shows do. You better have a good sense of humor about yourself. <laughs> you better not get all bent out of shape. And as Sam pointed out, this guy, I'm certain, whether it be message boards or articles written about the show, has heard a whole lot worse. But he doesn't expect his new BFF to bring him into the lion's den, though. I would think he, he would think I have his back. So I want to make sure oh. that I, I protect him a little bit. You know what I mean? 
Well, the bonus suits, and I'll brand, uh, brand it, that's where professionalism comes into play. You have to be able to handle those kind of situations. No one should ever be afraid to come in and, you know, start a fist fight because you don't let it get there. You know, you, 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 can, you can manipulate people and make them feel comfortable and, and then lower the boom. No, hold on now. We're talking about my buddy here. We're not trying to hurt him, okay? We're trying to keep him protected. But, Brandon, it won't be you saying this stuff. If Pugs is here when the guy's in, it'll be Pugs' opinion. This is what I thought. I mean, Pugs knows how to say it. Hey, man, this is what I thought during the show. I thought you were stoned all the time. This guy will probably laugh and say, no, nah, well, I know that's the perception. I have to move on. Yeah, but you're putting me to choose between different I want to go there. I think you don't make it choose. Like Pugs and me said, he probably heard this all before. So the guy's not going to get mad. He's probably going to laugh at the fact that everybody was stoned the whole time. All right, well, I'm yeah, excited. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Nobody, and, and the other thing is, nobody said they didn't like him. In fact, I think we all liked him. We just liked him because he seemed stoned. Okay. All right. I said, <laughs> I mean, look, and, I, I'm and, no, normally not this protective. Somehow. I'm sorry, say I said, again. I'm normally not this protective of my guest on the show, but this is a little special, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. This is your new boy toy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. I'm excited, man. I do recall you guys saying that uh, that these people would never hang out with me. I recall some comments that were made <laughs> like that. Do you recall any of that? I I think that we were talking about some of the other cast members. I I think everyone pretty much saw you and Glenn as being a Christian too. So I, I don't think anybody's shocked by this Terry. But however, you and uh, you and Tara, nah, you ain't hanging out with Tara. Tara wants nothing to do with you. And I want you nothing to do with her either. You by and the way. that uh, uh, actually, I don't even remember anybody else. I only remember Tara because Tara was my favorite. There's Matt. And, uh, Matt. And, Glenn. And Matt, yeah. I'm, I'm not digging that at all. I wouldn't want to hang out with him. I wouldn't want to hang out with any of them except for Glenn. No, you know what? Matt's hanging out with you, Brandon. Oh, Matt, I, I, no problem. Matt, no problem. Matt, but Matt wouldn't hang out with you. Matt oh, is sure not interested in your style. Matt is interested in Glenn's style. Glenn Matt wouldn't hang out with you. Matt oh, is I'm not sure interested in your style. Glenn, because he's so stoned all the time, is totally cool and chill. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. I, I wouldn't want to hang out with Matt. I wouldn't. I would be writing the in an hour hanging out like that, other than make fun of him. Yeah, well, Matt, Matt wouldn't hang out with any of us. Uh, you know, Matt might hang out with me if I had a big radio show in town, you know, but Matt's, Matt's a snob. Matt's not going to hang out with anybody he'd be lesser. Yeah, I hear you, man. Well, all right, well, there we go, man. I hope to have you on that day. Uh, I'll, before we set this up, I want to make sure you're uh, present. Uh, I think you're going to grow to like Glenn for even more than just being a stoner. <laughs> I want you guys to see what I see in him, okay? And All right, uh, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna hang up now, and I'm going to go get, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Belinda. Belinda's side of the story, yeah. Okay. All right, man. <laughs> well, listen, Pugs, thanks for coming on. Uh, check out his Facebook page. Uh, how do they find your Facebook page or Pugs? Uh, John Pugs. John with an H. John Pugs. All right. Uh, send me a text. Let me know about the whole Belinda thing. Uh, this is going to be interesting, man. Well, I guess we'll hear all this next week. All right, guys. All Thank right. you. It's been fun. See you Later, next week. Bro. Take care. Now, is this dangerous to uh, send Pugs, who's supposed to be the mediator, off to talk to her about her side of the story? Like, what if he was to, like, talk to her, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, well, he didn't tell me anything about that. Oh, uh, dude, I don't think uh, – this is – real quick on those out there. It was so funny having him on the show, okay? And that's the first time he's been on the show, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. I felt, I felt like I, I – went back in time where I felt a little bit intimidated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I guess because he's been doing this so long and I have the respect for Pugs being but, doing this that I felt like for a minute there I just felt like I wasn't myself. Uh -huh. and you probably couldn't sense that. Maybe you could. But it's like I should be letting, you know, he's just so used to being uh, as they don't like to say on the Big Dave show, his sidekick. Right. That uh, I just felt a little bit weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. What if this turns into Pugs calls bullet and gets it hooked set up then they start talking, and he becomes a shoulder to cry on. The next thing you know, they're going out. Is that going to be like a tough thing? Like if they end up hanging out, you know, just hanging out as friends, going out a few times a week, and then have a few drinks, and then before you know it, you know what drinks leads to. Yeah. And then we hear that Pugs and Belinda hooked up. Dude. Or even if it was just, you know, like they're doing the whole thing, and like she's just like casually mentioned a couple times that she is seeing somebody, and then after the show, they leave in the same car. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I gotta be honest with you. That what what I gotta realize is something that most people aren't used to that I am used to is um uh most I know that most people want to bang the chicks I'm dating, and they're 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 very it's they don't really hide it. And I think because they think that I don't care about it that much because of what we do for a living that it's so used. To, I'm I mean let's be real. We get paid to go hang out, and the girl I'm dating might be sitting there getting gawked at, and I act like I don't even know her. I act mm-hmm. like, you know, I know her, but, yeah, she's hot. Yeah, you should want You know, I got to sit there and be like the guy just being a fly on the wall going, yeah, I talk about her. Talk about her boobs. Talk about her butt. Right. And act like it doesn't phase me. And, and it, it kind of doesn't phase me. But it's uh, it's weird because I do realize I have friends that would, if given the opportunity, would definitely not turn that down. Yeah. And, and a lot of guys wouldn't. I mean, if you could bang a chick of that quality, you're going to do it most of the time. I hate to say that, but it's the truth. Well, and that's uh, that's one of the reasons why um, I'm usually very hesitant to deal with, like at least if I'm thinking about dating, then like girls that are into modeling or even like brand, you know, girls that will go out there. Like sometimes I'm just kind of turned off by that because you are just going to have to deal with that aspect of the entire thing. Right. You know what I mean? Like. You know, uh, I'm not one of the guys that gets jealous, so, like, uh, I can also kind of do that thing where, you know, if, if a guy's saying something about my girlfriend, I'm not going to be the guy that, you know, completely chodes out and freaks out and, like, starts getting in his face. But all night long, <laughs> you're dealing with that instead of enjoying your Saturday night. That's a little bit wearing, you know? So, like, by the end of the Saturday night, I'm pretty much over it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, it doesn't bug me. Yeah. And, and I'm so used to playing off, and then like you know, uh, Belinda was really cool about things, and not she might have only used her name, but I, what not wanting to, um, she's like, don't tell people you have a girlfriend; it's bad for business, you know. And and I tell them like, don't tell, don't tell people you have a boyfriend, you know. It's, it's not good. If they ask and put you on the spot, then don't lie, but right. you don't don't put stuff out there that doesn't need to be put out there because at the end of the day, we're selling a dream and a fantasy, and that's fine. That's what we want to do. We want people to you know enjoy their time with our, our company and. And, uh, you know, it reaches awkward levels, though, because I've, I've been in that with my ex-girlfriend where, like, for instance, like in interviews, she would go through that. She would end up getting asked if she has a boyfriend and I would never expect her to say that she has a boyfriend. That's awful for an interview. Yeah. So she would say, no, I'm single. That never really bothered me. Uh, I'm not a really big at the time. It was more my space. So there was that single or in a, in a relationship. I was never really that big into that whole thing. So I just told her to put single on there. Yeah. But I will say that a couple times when uh, like she ended up changing it over to in a relationship, and then it would switch back to single, and I'd be like, well, what's that about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's little things where like you never know where that line is. It's, it gets so blurry that you don't know what side you're supposed to be on. Like, yeah. It's very awkward. As it, you know, even if it feels comfortable uh, 99% of the time, the other 1% is very uncomfortable. I had a text here. It's a very interesting text. First, uh-huh. it was like, would Belinda hook up the pugs to get back at me? And the answer is probably, probably well, not. Well, not to get back at you. Just they're, they're fr- they become friends. And, you know, well, yeah, just... but they were, they were asking specifically, would she oh. do it just to get back at me? Because that would be a jab. But it, it would be a stupid jab. It would, it would backfire. If you're going to jab at somebody, you don't want the outcome to be that this person now, like, typically, you don't want them to hate you. More, you know, worse, you want them to, like, oh, I miss you. And, like, oh, that sucks because I, I want to be that chick. And he got her instead. And, right. But that's not what it would do. If she if she was to bang, like, pugs, I would just think less of her. And my memories are – you don't want to have – you want people, when you split, to have good memories about you. So they kind of regret that it didn't work out. I think that's my thinking on it. But it wouldn't. But here's a question, though. At what point, Jimmy – because me and you, because of the show, we're around each other all the time. Okay, uh-huh. um, probably more, more than anybody. You know, and with Sam too, of course. But um, at what level would you hook up with a chick? Would like, for instance, Belinda? You've never have you met Belinda before? Yeah, you have. Okay, all right. I don't remember y'all meeting, but I believe you. But mm-hmm. would you, uh, knowing the circumstances, would you hook up with Belinda? No, if I wouldn't you're, hook at, up if you're at it uh, back nine tomorrow night, and you and her are there. Uh, you've been drinking, uh-huh. so your 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 I don't know your morals and your thoughts are a little bit weakened by <laughs> the alcohol. Even more so weakened. <laughs> you, you would or wouldn't hook up with Belinda. No, I'm not hooking up with Belinda. If she said, "Jimmy, me and Brandon are cool. We can do what we want to. He can hook up with my friends. I can hook up with his friends." You're still not doing it. No. Is it because you're not attracted to her? 
Um, no, it's because I know that you guys were serious, and if you, I think that you've probably noticed, um, I always try to figure out what the hell is going on. Like, for I'll instance, give you that. Like last night, uh, I think that you said something about somebody in particular, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, you you asked, and I said, sure, I would. And then uh, you ended up coming back in, and I was like, kind of thinking, I was like, why am I not supposed to? Because I was trying to figure out. Like, am I stepping on somebody's toes right now? Right, right. So, like, I don't like stepping on anybody's toes. That's not really. By, by like the way, do. I don't. I don't necessarily. There is a little story behind that. Uh -huh. For the most part, you're not. There might be a little toe, a little pinky toe. A little pinky toe. <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell you more about that later. But, uh, but, uh, okay. At what point, though? Uh, the same same question for you. Would you? Oh, I would in a heartbeat because I never get offered. So, if Melinda offers herself up to me, <laughs> screw you, Brandon. I'm taking her. Hey, you you have. To. You're being serious, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How are you gonna? You have to appreciate that. We're about to cut the short <laughs> show uh, short, but and we're gonna to carry this over till Tuesday, I guess. Uh -huh. Which I got to feel because of pugs. This is definitely gonna get carried over. Uh, at what point do you? How do we address? How do you address me? How do you? Do you oh, come I just tell don't me? tell you. We you just, don't, no, no, you don't tell me. We just leave it. it but let's say I find out because she tells me. How do we handle this? Oh, I blame it all on her. She was drunk. She really wanted me. I never get any. <laughs> I'm taking advantage of it. If you can't understand that, Brandon, sorry. <laughs> what's sad is I think I'd understand. I know. I'm really <laughs> sorry to say this, Brandon, but I'm almost hoping that this happens. <laughs> oh, <laughs> asshole. Um, I probably. What's sad is I probably would understand. What if the? Well, I mean, I know opinions. What if the situation was reversed? And Jimmy was dating Melinda, <laughs> and they broke up, and then you were in the bar, and the same situation happened. Would you take advantage of it? I, I can tell you from from serious experiences, uh, I would not do it. No. If they had been split up for a while, let me mm -hmm. let me go. And you and I weren't around. I'm around you every day, so no, I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. If you and I, if y'all been split up for a while, and you and I were not around each other every day, then yeah, I'd probably would do it. Right. I mean, it, it depends. It depends on how how well, serious. And I there's don't know. also the, like the bro thing you could kind of do. Like I could text you and say. Is it cool? Hey, man, Belinda's really hot for me. I'm drunk. She's drunk. You guys are broken up. Do you mind, man? Because I don't like this That's, that's a good thing. When do. Jimmy's broken up with some of his girlfriends, I make jokes like, oh, I think I'm going to go try and hit that. And he's like, please do. So it's like some some guys don't care and other people. Yeah. It's funny, uh, Sam, because a lot of times if you do ask your buddies, they probably don't care. And so you might as well ask them because, you know, if you don't ask, you're definitely not going to get nowhere, or you're going to do it and feel really bad. But if about I don't it. hear back from you and the offer's still on the table, I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got an allotted amount of time. Yeah. Hey, I texted you. You didn't answer back. Sorry, I can't lose this opportunity. <laughs> He's like, I texted you 30 seconds later. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's all over. I just replied two minutes ago. Well, you know, that's two minutes too late. <laughs> what about let's let's go one other scenario. We'll call it a day. Um, Jimmy, what if the uh, situation was? I met, let's take one of the girls you met last week or went on a date with, okay? Let's mm -hmm. take just, which one did you like the most? Who's your favorite? Um, the, the three girls that we together talked to. Oh, Jesus. Uh, last Claire. week was so long Claire. ago. Yeah, probably Claire. Okay. So let's say you and Claire talked. Y'all went out. Right. Let's say y'all went on a real date that night, not what we did, okay? Uh-huh. And, and you had, would you be pissed if I told you, uh, yeah, I banged, I banged her last night? Uh, no, because that was so early on. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if, if let's you say I dated for three weeks and then y'all quit dating, so now you, you and you banged her. Dating. I think that that's like appropriate for like one of those text messages. You're like, okay. hey, hey, dude, you know, I know it's been three weeks. You guys aren't really talking all that much, but I got a situation here. You know, so you go for it. That's not that big of a deal. But I mean, like, if it's really, really early on, then there's no harm, no foul. There's nothing really built there. So w would you now? Let's say that same night when I said y'all went out, uh -huh. surprisingly, what would you do if you found out because y'all y'all just met that day? Right. Okay. Let's say that after you, well, we left it together, but we went to Dukes. But let's say that uh, later that night, Claire called me up, and I I got the phone call, and then the next day I said, oh, by the way, dude, that chick came over to my house last night. Are you pissed at me? Are you cool about it? What is your? I mean, it's the first day I met y'all, but you're supposed to be meeting her. I'm supposed to be setting you up with this chick. Right. How are you feeling about it? Are you making an admission here? No, I'm, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm I was wondering that. that too. No, I'm, I, you, I'm not making an admission. Did you no, make I'm being uh, hypothetical. No. Um, no, I don't think so because I mean, it's still just so just early on. Big. And, you know, like for me, I'm more of that guy that, like, if she's into somebody else, I'd rather her figure that out really quickly. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not really bothered with the whole thing. Let me tell you what I see being the problem. I agree with you, okay? Uh -huh. The problem in that scenario that I just gave you would be that I sucked you in, into kind of 
pushed you, not pushing you because you liked her, but but I was like trying to like put y'all together, and it's almost a clock block move because oh yeah, yeah. you know because here I am like selling her on you and vice versa, and then all of a sudden I end up with her. Well, it's I would be if I was gonna be I'd be pissed like why did you waste my time? Why did you do all that if you, if you had feelings for her or you thought it might happen or whatever? How come you? did that set me up for failure that right. would be the problem i would have in that instance yeah i guess i would be a little bit upset about that part of it but i guess i'm assuming that it didn't really you know work and then later on she ended up like texting you i'm not really all that bothered about that you know what i mean right because like really the 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 number and i, I think that there's actually scientific studies that go by this the the one thing that people find most attractive about the opposite sex or about people that they find attractive is that they find them attractive that's the number one thing. So, like, kind of say that one more time. Okay, so like, let's say let's say you go into like a bar, right? And okay. there's uh, there's ten different girls there. Um, all of them are attractive. All of them are like minding their own business. Uh, they're equally hot. One of them is looking over at you, and you can tell that she's probably attracted to you. Right. That girl is immediately the most attractive person in the sure, bar. Sure, because you know yeah. it's a given. You got it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you know you're not wasting your time. She's into you, and that's a, a physical attraction is a big key element in hooking up. Yeah, and that's exciting. You know what I mean? So sure. like, if that's not there uh, for me and another girl, then I wipe the slate with that girl. Like that's totally which, cool. Which you just said something interesting. That's why you should be a little bit more aggressive because you might be sitting there and because you give that hot girl the attention and she doesn't want to waste her time. She knows how you feel. It's it's safe to move on to the jinga. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. Okay. Okay. There's no more wondering. This guy, he looks good. He's good enough looking. Let's just move forward. And there you go. So, mm -hmm. so the guy that steps up sometimes gets to step in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, all right. Listen, man. Uh, let's call it a day. Sounds Th good. That, that went by pretty fast. It was fun to have pugs on. It was interesting. Yeah. Uh, I got to tell you, like I said, it was a little, little nerve wracking. Just, <laughs> I know it's a little, little serious. Like, just felt a little bit intimidating because here's pugs on the show, and I'm so used to the roles being reversed. I felt like a, just, I don't know, a little, a little shock for me. Yeah. I know how it feels. Uh, uh, one time I ended up uh, the old host of uh, the show that I produced on with us, and it was very weird because you hear that voice, and that's supposed to be the one that leads everything. Yeah. And, it's like dogs are to their master. Right, yeah. Which I just put myself as being a dog. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it is. You know what? You just nailed it. It's, it yeah. You're trained to hear that voice and that tone, Yeah. and that means, okay, You respond charge? to that. Yeah. Yeah. That means forever I'll be his bitch. <laughs> How the hell? So weird. Well, you know, that's the way radio works, man. You just uh, you get so used to a certain audio, uh, certain sounds that mean certain things. So. And he, he manipulated the show by getting Belinda to call in and all that stuff. Look at that. Yeah, it was well done. Yeah. How about that, dude? Yeah. Can't ever <laughs> let that happen no more. Um, well, listen, I want to thank Sam, the mailman, for showing in today. We got no news, but the breaking news, which is the most important news. Yeah. Incident. Thank got a God bunch you're... of stuff we can do. Hash out next week. Yeah. Oh, really? Hold on. Hash yeah, just out. some uh, entertainment and some stuff that, no, I mean, story-wise, that oh, we okay. didn't get to, but okay. it's not time-dated. All right. Um, I, you know, we didn't get Big Dave to call in. I sent him a text hoping Dave would call in. We still got those issues. He's still hibernating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, guys, uh, I'm Sunbury Brandon. I'm Jimmy. Sam. We'll see you guys uh, next Tuesday. Dallas Furniture should say that. And also remember, uh, on your iPhones, your droids, I believe droids, uh -huh. and your Blackberries, you can now listen to the show on your phone. It'll, it'll repeat all day long, I believe. Yep. Podcast coming soon. Check us out on thebarlive.com. Uh, tell your friends about us. Uh, we'll see you guys next time.